the toss, and they opt to take the choice in the second half kickoff. So they'll be kicking off to Clemson right now. It's Jess Atkinson from Camp Springs, Maryland, getting set to get this ball game underway. We've got Ray Williams, number 45, to the far side, and Terrence Rulak to the near side as the receiver's on the goal line for Clemson. Atkinson, one of the very fine kickers in the ACC. And this game could come right down to that kicking game. He has 75 point after touchdowns in a row and 41 out of 60 field goal tries. Here's his kickoff. And we're underway with a line drive to Williams in the end zone. He'll run it out from three yards deep. The fine freshman is brought down at the 17-yard line by Keita Covington. Let's check now the Tiger offense. Mike Epley, the leading passer efficiency-wise in the ACC. Stacy Driver at tailback and fullback is Kevin Mack. There are the receivers. Senior Kendall Alley starting at the flanker spot. KD Dunn with four touchdown catches. And there's the interior line led by All-American candidate James Barr. Alley and Boyer are now in at the receiver spots as Epley on a first and ten. Ball placement at the 17. That's Kevin Mack right up the middle. And Kevin Kine looks like uh, Clemson already testing that middle that Auburn did so well against. Here's the Maryland defense. Furman, Thompson, and McHale. Then the linebacker core. Fossett in the starting role today. Jones, Krause, and Baldwin in the secondary. The wide six defense for Maryland. Number 14 in orange, Mike Epley. Second down three at the 24. Max, a gain of a yard on the play, brought down by the linebacker Eric Wilson. And this Eric Wilson, the leading tackler with 151 tackles on the year, 10 tackles for loss. He's got four sacks. He's quite a man. Part. We'll see a lot of Wilson today. We'll also see a lot of Fawcett, who will be taking the place of a starter. Bobby DePaul broke his leg in the Auburn game. We'll talk more about that. Butler to the far side. Rulak to the near side on a third and two from the 25. They see Driver doing a little jump there as the give goes to Kevin Mack. And Mack first ball over the second effort over the 30-yard line. Good enough for the first down. Fawcett made the initial hit, and Clarence Baldwin came up to make the second tackle. He has 52 stops on the year. Fawcett is the backup to Bobby, uh, excuse me, to Eric Wilson. He's moving over to the other side. And yes, there is a difference playing left and right linebacker in any defense. It's a little bit different. Back three carries for 13 yards in this game. 609 yards coming into the contest on the season. First and 10 at the 30. Stacy Driver, he's had three outstanding ball games. His last three games, he takes the ball to the 35-yard line, and Fossett once again to make the stop. Fossett, 6'3", 230 pounds, a legitimate freshman. Interesting story, Fossett, 22 years old, approximately 22, was in the Toronto chain in baseball for three or four years. He came in as a freshman, 22-year-old, decided to play football, and here he is starting against Clemson. Stacy Driver in the last ball game, taking over the rushing leadership of the Clemson Tigers. On a second and six now from the 34. It goes back to Driver on the pitch. Looking for a place to go. Has enough speed to finally get to the corner just shy of the first down as he's knocked out of bounds at the 40-yard line by Clarence Baldwin. Maryland did a fine job of that defensively stringing it out, but just right there, number 21, athletic ability, a little stop and go move, got him outside, very close to a first down. Don't be deceived by the yardage that Maryland gave up last week to Auburn. 450 is a lot, but traditionally very strong up front in this wide tackle six defense. Third and one at the 40. Driver number 21, the handoff goes to Kevin Mack as expected. I don't believe he made it. It's going to be very, very close as he moves over the 40-yard line. He had to get over the 41. Fawcett coming in quickly from that linebacker spot. Clemson wearing the orange pants today. They're 9-0 in those colorful pants. 
I think we need to talk a little bit about the Auburn-Maryland game, getting right off the bat here. Uh, Maryland gave up 450 yards, but a lot of that came up the middle. There was a lot of runs up the middle in which the Maryland defense got spread out. And the running backs of Auburn are very strong. They broke some tackles, and they got loose for some big gains. That's where most of that 450 came from. You can't expect Maryland to give up that kind of yardage today. They're going to be tough on Clemson. Very, just a little bit short of a first down here, Hart. And back to the Orange Pants, there is some significance here because Clemson defeated Maryland and Orange Pants to clinch the ACC title back in 1981. And that's the psychological edge they're trying to gain by the Orange Pants here today. Joe Kraus is deep. Ten men up the front. 19-yard line as there's Pauling's kick. Coming over to the sideline goes out of bounds. Not the kind of punt that he would have liked to have gotten off. Excuse me there, Art, that Maryland had 10 men up front on that punt. They know that Hatcher is a great, great kicker, and Pauling is a good kicker, and they're going to put some pressure on the punting and the kickoff game, excuse me, and the uh, field goal game of Clemson today. They started there with a single safety and 10 men up front. Kevin, we'd like to send our very best wishes to Toby Jenkins, who's directed all of our Clemson games with the exception of this one. He's in the hospital in Columbia, South Carolina, doing very fine on the recovery. We'd like to send our best wishes along to Toby. First and 10 now. Maryland taking over the 38-yard line with 12-18 remaining first quarter. The swing pass comes out to Joyner, Willie Joyner, and he's out of bounds at the 41-yard line. James Robinson, who's had some outstanding ball games lately, 63 can uh, tackles coming into the ball game. Robinson credited with the tackle. Esiason, Boomer at quarterback. Wide receivers, Greg Hill tying a record for the most touchdown catches for this club. And there's the interior line with Glover over the ball at center. Esiason now calling the signals for Maryland on the second and seven from the 41. Sander dropping straight back. It's a rush from uh, Robinson, and he goes down at the 40-yard line. James Robinson, who has three sacks on the year, gets in close, and Esiason nicely stepped around him. Let's take a look at that defense now for the Clemson Tigers. Edgar Pickett with so many drops for losses this year. James Robinson, who's come on. William Devane starting at middle guard. Jimmy Scott, then Henry Walls and Milton, the linebackers in the secondary. Erickson, Pleasant, Childers, and Davis, your starters. Greg Hill and Eric Holder, the wide receivers, on a third and eight from the 40-yard line. Sazen hands off to Joyner. Only Joyner does not get the first down as he stopped at the 46-yard line by Jim Scott. Scott starting at the right tackle spot, 6'4", 250 from Alexandria, Virginia. Listen to the crowd, Art. They're on their feet. Does it make a difference? Seniors playing their last game at home. You better believe it makes a difference. These guys are going to be up. Every senior and their brothers, the juniors and sophomore and freshmen on the team, they'll all be up for this game at Clemson. Alan Sadler averaging 40.1 yards a kick. Gets it away. Billy Davis is waiting for the fair catch at the 20-yard line. And picks it up at about the 21. With the score. With no score in the ball game. 10 minutes, 51 seconds remaining here for the first quarter. We'll pause now for a word from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. So after the 33-yard punt by Sadler, it's first and 10 for Clemson at the 21-yard line. Epley on the roll, has to get rid of it quickly, and it's batted down, almost intercepted that time, intended for, uh, no, it was Baker knocking it down. Eric Wilson, number 55, got a hand on it, and Baker was on the rush. Play here is made by Brian Baker, the outside linebacker. Now, Epley has a little more mobility than Isaiah's, and now he's going to try and get to the corner. See Baker, number two, right there? Makes Mike pull up and throw it off his back foot, and Wilson, good team defense, standing there, almost picked it off for a touchdown. Eric Wilson already with one interception on the season is Epley now. Brings his team up with a second and ten, still at the 21. Stacy Driver. He's known for hitting the hole quickly. Breaks through the initial line, and Fossett is called upon from his linebacker spot once again to make the tackle. 
but not before a first down. Wide tackle six defense. If you can block it, you can run on it. They're only three deep. Look at the hole for Driver as he goes up the middle, and he's just tripped up at the last minute, or else he's gone. Number six, you see, is coming up is the safety, and this defense, there's only a single safety. You can get past the line. You're gone. Stacy Driver and three carries, 21 yards, first and 10 at the 33. Epley goes back. Got his man over the middle. That's KD Dunn, the tight end. Dunn, another first down play as he moves over the 45 to the 47-yard line. J.D. Gross makes the tackle. Again, you have to remember, it's a six-man line. If you can split the linebackers, you get between them and behind them. There's only one man deeper than you are, and that's the safety. K.D. Dunn did that. He split the linebackers. Epley found him for a first down. Dunn is 14th catch of the year. He's averaging 14.7 per catch. He's got four touchdowns on the season. First and 10 at the 46, the option play. The handoff to the front man, Kevin Mack, the fullback. Eric yep. Wilson coming over to make the stop. There you see Maryland leading the series 17 13 and 1. In fact, Maryland is the only ACC team to have a winning record against Clemson. It's a lot of what ifs in this game, Art. Of course, Maryland, the last team to beat Clemson in the ACC, and that statistic right there. Maryland has a good record against the Tigers. Second and five at the 49. Mack now with 18 yards carried in this ball game. Rulak in the slot as the handoff goes to Stacy Driver once again. Booms his way near the first down marker at the 44-yard line. Tyrone Furman, the left guard on defense, making his 81st tackle of the year. That's good blocking up front by Dale Swing and Reese and Ellis on the right side of that line. They just pushed Maryland off the ball. Driver now has carried four times for 25 yards in this ball game. Ray Williams comes out of the ball game in the lineup. And we've got Bullard coming in at a wing back in the short yardage situation. Third and less than a yard for the first down at the 45 yard line. Dunn and Riggs, two tight ends in there as well as it goes to Mack and he's stacked up a penalty flag, I believe was thrown. Well, we'll see what the call is when they unpile. Delay of game, Delay of game penalty. penalty. That's a tough call on Clemson. Clemson's also going for the most consecutive wins in the ACC. You know what team holds that record? It's Maryland. 21 straight. In fact, the 21st win in that streak, the record setter, was against Clemson here in Death Valley, a 21-14 Terrapin victory. So these two teams have a pretty rich history. Mack and Driver out of the eye on a third and six from the 49. Rulak is split to the near side. Epley looks over the middle. In and out of the hands of Jim Riggs from the tight end spot. Well, you can't get it to him much better than that. Riggs did everything but sing a song. He stepped inside. The linebacker was wide open, held up his hand. Mike didn't see him to the last minute, tried to rip it to him, and he threw a little wide. Dale Hatcher in to do the punting, and Joe Krause is deep to receive. Hatcher, his previous punt, very poor 22 yards, but this one hangs beautifully, and they might be able to catch that. No, they can't. It goes into the end zone. It looked like when it took off his foot, but he might be able to get his... Teammates down there in time to bat it inside the five-yard line. So Maryland now taking over first and ten from their 20-yard line. Now, you know Bobby Ross has really created an awful lot of excitement with that University of Maryland program, Kevin. There's a good shot of him on the sideline. His type of offense and everything has added about 10,000 people per game into their home stadium. Made Boomer, definitely. Boomer was third string when Bobby came. Boomer's now an All-American. 8.15 remaining first quarter. Boomer pitches back. Badonic. And the fullback is stopped by Edgar Pickett. Badonic started the year as a second team fullback. Dave Daddio went down with an injury. He's taken over. He's the leading rusher on this team. Uh, Daddy, uh, Badonic is. And he's very strong up top and also a, quite a receiver. You'll see a lot of them. This picture of Danny Ford. He's got quite a record himself and uh, an outstanding job with the Tigers this year on probation and yet nationally ranked. Second Not an easy four thing to do. at the 26-yard line. But Donick, you mentioned he was a fine receiver. He is tied for the lead in receptions on this ball club. And it sinks it out of bounds. He had to throw over some people coming in. Intended for Sean Sullivan on the outside. The Sizens pass just took off. 
Well, Boomer's saying to himself, I gotta find an open receiver. The reason that ball took off is because he threw it over there. Everyone was covered. Clemson doing a good job on pass defense early in the game. Greg Hill is split to the far side. A third and four from the 26. Boulder is in the slot. Willie Joyner and Jimmy Scott secures him. The putt team comes back on for Maryland. James Robinson also coming in on the stop. Let's take a look at the big middle guard, Perry. He does something wrong. And watch him get up too high. See, he gets the smaller offensive lineman underneath him, tries to keep his feet. Now watch the play come to Perry. <laughs> here they come. And Williams says, well, here, let me get an assist. And he jumps in on it. Jimmy Scott, number 67 there. And Sadler has one previous punt for 33 yards. Billy Davis standing back on his 33-yard line, number 24. Big rush on, a low wobbly kick. And unfortunately for Davis, it's one that he has to let go, and it rolls to the point of about the 36-yard line where they'll take over first and 10. All right, it appeared Clemson might have blocked that kick. One of the players on the far side came in, had a shot, and pulled up just at the last minute. Maybe thought he was going to rough the kicker. Seemed if he would have laid out, he might have had a shot at it. Flowers is in a tailback as Ray Williams comes to the near side and Boyer goes to the far side. Mack is the lone remaining running back. Flowers is over on the wing at the right side on the first down play. Epley has everybody out. He goes to Flowers. Flowers, nice cut. First down and more. He's got great speed. but this one he just turned on the afterburner. Six minutes and 28 seconds remaining to be played here in the first quarter of action and Clemson gets on the scoreboard. Polly. Puts it up and it's good. Polly has now hit 64. Point after touchdowns in a row. Clemson had success with the tight end. They hook J.D. Dunn up over the middle, occupies both linebackers, and then they get it out to Flowers. And this is just a great individual effort. Look at all the orange shirts blocking out here. Here's Dunn, 81, in the right corner of your screen. Great block here by Boyer. And then it's a foot race, and you're just not going to beat Flowers in a foot race as he goes all the way for a touchdown. Remember against the wide tackle six, if you can get it outside quickly, you're leaving six guys behind. This is a six-man line. If you can get this many orange shirts to the sideline, Line. This is what happened. There's Wilson, the linebacker. He was on Dunn, couldn't get there. Good block by Boyer. And then Maryland just running into each other as Flowers takes off down the sideline for a touchdown. A big play for Clemson. They lead 7 0. And that initial block was thrown by Steve Reese, the right guard, number 63. You saw him flying over there on the pull to help Flowers get away from the line of scrimmage. Epley now two for four for 77 yards already in this ballgame. Donald Igwebuike set the kickoff. He's 37 of 52 as far as non-returnable kickoffs is concerned. That's better than 71% have not been returned. Tommy Neal is deep set to prepare at the five-yard line. Igwebuike hangs one high. And they'll run it out from a yard and a half deep. Good hit, and he's brought down at the 26-yard line by Rod McSwain. McSwain not only showing up well on special teams, but he's Clemson's leader in passes broken up this year with 10. Among the league leaders with that figure as well. What a brilliant career he's had here at Clemson and is having. First and 10 from the 26. Maryland taking over. As they now trail 7-0 to 622 remaining first period. Hill and Davis, the wide receivers. Back to pass. 
goes over the middle and it's right through the hands of Chris Knight, the tight end. Coverage has been excellent here. Boomer has time as he goes back. But well, watch the Clemson Iron Church. We're going to get a penalty on Maryland on this play. There's a man open. See the man standing right there, Milton? Justin Boomer's line, as he moves, I think Boomer gets a little bit antsy and throws it up and behind the receiver. That was Billy Davis giving him a little extra shot as the ball whizzed by him. It was a holding penalty against Maryland, so the Terrapins. They're going to decline. Clemson declines, and against a passing team that's as explosive as Maryland, you'd rather have the down. They can pick up 15, 20 yards at a clip, so take the down away from them. At the 26, second and 10 now. Davis and Sullivan, the wide out. Field, a loss of yardage. But Donick drew a crowd. Let's give James Robinson and uh, William Devane the initial hits. No substitute for strength and penetration, and that's what happened there. Devane and Robinson just working their men off the left side. But Donick took the ball. It looked like he wasn't even looking and ran into the Clemson defense. There was Henry some room Walls. inside. Henry Walls, the leading tackler on this team, giving the defensive signals. Third and 13 for the Terrapins at the 23-yard line. Messiah's in back on the deep drop. He gets the rush by Robinson. Has to come out of the pocket. Overthrows his tight end that time, Bill Rogers. Rogers with 11 receptions and one touchdown of the year. Can't get through the football. What pressure by Robinson, Devane, and Brown. Well, Robinson makes the play because he forces Boomer out. See him, and that's great reaction by James. Boomer makes the cut, and Robinson's still on his back. You don't think Boomer knows it? You better believe he knows it, and he throws it high for an incompletion. Sadler comes in to punt once again. He's punted twice, averaging 35 yards a kick. Davis is moving up now to his 41-yard line. This could be a good field position situation for Clemson. Everybody's coming on, but they go outside the kicker. And he floats a beautiful punt. Davis over the shoulder at the 30 is dragged down to the 25-yard line. His forward motion will be placed at the 26-yard line. Let's take another look at that last play. Take a look at some physical strength here. This is from behind the Maryland offense. This is James Robinson, the man that gets through. Look at him use his upper body to get rid of the tackler or the blocker. And now Boomer sees him. Boomer says, hey, I'm getting out of here. That's what made the play. The immediate pressure by Robinson. And now you got a guy trying to throw on the run. And the chances for an interception or incompletion are great. You see with that great ISO why he's third on the team in tackles for loss and second in sacks. The way he can get through with the initial blocker. Mack and Flowers. The backs. goes to Braxton Williams, and Williams goes over the 35, the 45, I mean, to the 46-yard line. Braxton Williams out of the fullback spot. Take a look at a guy who might not even known he had the ball. This is such a good fake. Look at Braxton Williams. He gets out here, and he says, whoa, I'm all alone here. Tries to switch hands with the ball, but he's got the ball in the wrong hand now. He wants it away from the tackler. And then he goes for big yard. It's just a big hole. Great blocking by the front of that Clemson line. And they're moving the ball. Lendl Johnson, or Lendl Jones, rather, from Eston, Pennsylvania, making the tackle on Big Braxton with 4.56 remaining first quarter. First and 10 at the 45. He's got his man alley at the 30-yard line. Kendall Alley started today because he's a senior. They've had some prolific freshman receivers, Rulak and Williams, in front of him. But Alley is proving that he's part of this football team. Epley now with 102 yards through the air. Got to be happy for uh, Alley. If you can run against the wide tackle six, you won't have any trouble passing against it, and that's what's happening here. The fake up the middle holds everybody. Epley rolls to the outside. That keeps the corner men up. Completion is easy. That's Flowers on the ball carrier. On the ball carrier, I should say, and he goes to the 30-yard line. Just gets back to the line of scrimmage, and it's uh, it'll be a second and ten situation at the 29-yard line. Maryland is very formidable on defense. Now, those of you that heard about the Auburn game, the 450 yards, and then, of course, today against Clemson, they're having the ball moved against it. Don't be fooled. Very strong physically and very tough up front. When they make adjustments, they're going to give the Tigers a little bit of a problem. Charleston to the far side, and Alley is split left. Epley. Handing to Braxton Williams, tries the Braxton left Williams side right off here. the guard spot. Tyrone Furman making the tackle along with Jim Joyce helping out. Furman uh, has 80 tackles on the year and five of those tackles for loss. He's a strong young man at 255 pounds, 6'1". Braxton Williams on two carries now for 23 yards. 
Third and seven for the Tigers at the 26. Butler and Rulak, your wide receivers. Epley makes the flowers. Goes over the middle. Oh, he threaded the needle on that pass beautifully to Butler. Richard Butler. Butler is sixth catch of the year. What you have to love about Clemson is all year it's been Williams, Rulak, the freshman's last two plays. It's Butler and Kendall Alley, and Epley is just magnificent. Threaded the needle, as you said, Art, right on the money. Carlson to the right, Alley to the left now from the 14-yard line. They go to Flowers on the first down call. Not much room up the middle. Gain of a couple of yards, and uh, Koch, Pete Koch, making the tackle for Maryland. He's 255 pounds, a junior, 6'5". Bench is 465 pounds. The Maryland players have this, this cult, this bench-pressing cult. Started with Randy White, now with the Dallas Cowboys. They all want to join this 400-plus uh, club, and there are some very strange names in that. Some wide receivers, <laughs> some running backs, all benching over 400 pounds. Well, even Esaias, and it goes like something like 355 on the bench press as a quarterback. Timeout call with two minutes and 35 seconds remaining to be played here for the first quarter. Clemson 7, Maryland nothing. We'll be back with more Clemson football after this word from Burger King. Joe Ellis, Andy Cheatham, Alex Hudson, James Barr. That interior offensive line, Epley is 113 yards through the air, and he's going to try it again on a second and nine. Just got it away. KD done. Your tight end goes in for the score. Eric Wilson had a great rush, but Epley, oh, he got it away just in time. KD done his fifth touchdown of the year. Kevin Kiley, Epley is now five out of seven for 126 yards, and we're not out of the first quarter yet with 225 remaining. But only one of those passes went far downfield, and that was the one to Alley. Most of these passes have been short passes, and the receiver has run with it. Flowers ran a long way. K.D. Dunn just ran about 15 yards for a touchdown. Clemson very conservative, but they know their offense. Pauling checks it up and through the upright. And he's already broken the Clemson, an ACC record for extra points. This is a brilliant play. You've got Rulak right there in motion. Epley rolls the same way, never thinking about going that way. He knows that Dunn is over on the other side. And now Wilson knows, but it's too late. As Dunn is wide open, he's going to take it into the end zone. The Maryland pursuit all going in the opposite direction. A brilliant offensive play and a great place on the field to use it. Tigers moving 75 yards in seven plays with Dunn's 13-yard pass reception from Epley capping the score to make it Clemson 14 to nothing over Maryland. 2.25 remaining here in the first quarter. Number three there was Krause at safety again. You'll see a lot of him. Remember, there's only one man deep. In this defense, the wide tackle six, the six, two, three. Krause is number three. He'll be the last man on any scoring play. There's Dunn getting a well-deserved rest listening to his coaching staff. I don't know what they could do any, any better right now. Epley came into the game with ten touchdown passes, and he has now tied the Clemson record for a single season in touchdown passes. Neal from his goal line. Hit hard at the 21-yard line and is down there. So Epley, with two touchdown passes in this ball game, has now broken the Clemson single-season mark for passing touchdowns. And that art was set by a fellow named Harvey White back in 1957, a record that stood for quite a while. Zayas, it is one for four through the air for only three yards. Drops back. Hits the tight end over the middle, Bill Rogers. And Rogers is hit immediately by Ronald Watson. Watson with 67 tackles now on the year from his free safety spot. 
Terrapins were behind 14-0 to Auburn last week. They actually took the lead in that game before they went down. So Maryland has that explosive offense, one that's capable of scoring lots of points quickly, although it'll be tough in Death Valley. Second and five from the 26. And off the joiner. And Joyner just over the 30-yard line, close to that first down marker. Looks like he might have it. Steve Berlin made the tackle, his 30th tackle of the year. Berlin from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. You see Boomer looking things over now. Two for five, eight yards, and very unlike Maryland's offense. One of the few college teams that will rush for less than they pass. Maryland passes for 227 a game and only runs for 183. Joyner with 13 yards on three carries. Here's the first down play at the 32. And once again, they go to Bill Rogers. And Rogers, good yardage for another first down. Makes it up to the 45. 44-yard line, they'll place it. Stopped there by Rod McSwain. Bill Rogers, number 82, is an interesting story. This is his third, his third university. He began at Georgia Tech, then went to Navy, and was an excellent player in all of these schools. And now he's at Maryland. Been in college for 13 years. No, I'm only kidding. He's been around quite a while, though. Red-shirted a few times. Russell Davis and Sean Sullivan, the whiteouts. First and 10 from the 45. They're going to mark it. Cyan. the joiner. Terrific defense by linebacker Keith Williams. No gain as joiner. Darn near didn't get the handoff. We've talked about offensive backs. You like those backs that jump. Boy, you hate to see them when they're on their feet. Look at him. Oh, he's just dead meat. And that's why you don't jump right there. Look at the stick by Williams. Like to catch him in the air. They don't, they're like feathers when they're up there and just drive them right down. 64 tackles on the year. Make it a gain of only a yard. Second and nine at the 46-yard line with 18 seconds remaining first quarter. Tyson goes back. Looks it over to his fullback. We mentioned earlier he's a fine pass receiver, but Donick and Vidonic is forced out of bounds after a gain of about five yards to the 48-yard line. Jim Scott finally moving over there to push him out of bounds with help from Watson. I'll tell you, Badonic picked up yardage on that, but that was an outstanding play. That's the type of play that you see on the films on Monday afternoon. Keith Williams, a linebacker, you might have seen somebody dive and just catch his ankle, came from the linebacker position and almost dragged Badonic back on a pass, down on a pass in the backfield. Great, great play. Third and two from the 47-yard line. Badonic also had a concussion and an ankle problem. They didn't know if he was going to start this ball game. He tried it in the pregame warm-ups. Pitch goes back to Joyner. He's got the first down as he's bounced out of bounds inside the 45-yard line by Chucky Richardson. Number 56 from Thomasville, Georgia. There's the siren ending the first quarter of action with Clemson leading at 14 to nothing over the University of Maryland. We'll pause now for a word from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. We start the second quarter, first and 10 for Maryland at the 43-yard line. Jeff Wells has come in to place, uh, replace Edgar Pickett. And he did not come off the field under his own power. Pickett really taking a shot from a block from the fullback. Pass over the middle. The Siasen's throw goes to Russell Davis. Davis is picked off by Ronald Watson, but not before more good yardage. Pickett would be quite a loss to this Clemson team, the second leading tackler in the club coming into the game of 73 stops. And noted for his tackles for loss of yardage, he had 10 tackles in 37 total ones last year for losses. Came into this game with 10 tackles for loss of yardage. Boomer is thrown for 39 yards now through the air as they start to get their offense generated. Willie Joyner has no place to go, and they're not running on this Clemson defense. James Robinson making the tackle. Well, this is a look at Pickett, and what happened was he came up to meet the play, and Badonic caught him under the chin. Appears he's, he appears he's unconscious. Now, that, that could be a, a, a reasonably serious injury. We hope it isn't, but as you see, he seems to be... He just can't walk. I don't believe it's his legs. They weren't looking at his legs. It was a tremendous shot. Second and ten at the 33 now. Knight and Davis are split. Greg Hill also in motion. They go to Hill, and it comes off the hands of Tyrone Davis. That 
pass. A bullet was intended for Hill, but he was in, going right into a zone. Boomer's pumped up in this game. You, you know he's ready. The ACC title, all of these things in, in his mind. Now watch this pass. He just throws it a little hard, and he throws it behind the receiver. This is not the first time he's done that, and he threw it so hard, he threw it through the defense, too. Had he thrown it a little easier, Clemson might have picked it off. Davis gets his hands on it, but just too tough to handle. Sullivan goes to the far side, and it is Russell Davis to the near side, third and ten. Sison is back, gets the big rush. Here comes Perry, gets around him, robs it to the open man, Joyner, who falls near the first down marker. William Perry with the big rush that time, just didn't quite have the lateral quickness to pick off the quarterback, but a very fine play it turned out. Difference between quarterbacks and great quarterbacks, you're going to see one. Boomer is an All-American candidate and a candidate for ACC Player of the Year, and that's why. And I'll tell you, William Perry make your feet a little quicker. Not only does he get away, but he finds the receiver and gets a good enough pass out so Joyner can catch it. Close to a first down. It is a first down, Maryland. First down at the 22-yard line. 13-28 remaining second quarter. 14 to nothing, Clemson. Maryland trying to get on the board. And off the joiner. It's it over the 20-yard line. Give him a gain of four yards on the play before Jim Scott secures him. Defensively, when you come into a game like this, you have a defensive game plan. And in order to alter that, to make you a little bit more, well, flamboyant, I guess, less conservative on defense, whatever. The offense has to have something work. Maryland, the first two or three possessions, nothing worked. Now they have a couple of plays that are working, and the defense is making adjustments. That's opening up things on the other side of the field. Milton comes in for Williams at a linebacker spot for the Tigers, second and seven for the Terrapins at the 19-yard line. Siason on the end around. This has been a good play for Maryland. Russell Davis... Gets it to the 10-yard line, and that should be another first down. Roy Brown, the tackle, number 47. We talked all year about aggressive defense, how to use it against them. This is a fake to the tailback joiner, and then the handoff to the wide out as he comes around. Now, a couple of blocks could have been thrown here that might have helped out. That's a missed block right there. And then number 89 runs into his own man. And Roy Brown comes up and makes the tackle. A couple of good blocks might have been a touchdown. Clemson fans on their feet encouraging their defense now at the 10-yard line. They could get a first down and not a touchdown. Esiason lobs one for the end zone, and Hill, who leads this club in touchdown receptions, cannot pick it off. Tyrone Davis on the coverage, one-on-one. -on -one. You see that play so often in the pros where they just loft it into the corner. I've never liked that play myself, but it, it works enough time. Seems like it's a high percentage pass, but I hate to see him loft it up there, hanging up in the air so so long. If the defender turns around, he's got it. In that case, he didn't, and the ball went incomplete. Giving you statistics on Greg Hill, he has 13 touchdown catches in 20 games during his career. He's only a junior. Second and 10 now. Sison goes back, looking into the end zone and fires it over the outstretched head, I should say, of uh, Russell Davis. Watson once again, some pretty good blanket coverage on the play. The Sison putting it up high because he knew he was throwing into a crowd. Let's take a look at this right here. You wonder why a receiver doesn't catch the ball. That's why, because they disrupt his pattern, and then he falls down. When you bump a guy like that, he's trying to get back into the pattern. Anything can happen. That's why you've got to bump it. In that case, he fell down on his own, but I'm sure somebody would have been glad to come along and knock him down if he needed to be knocked down. Greg Hill, number four, comes in with the offensive play, and he's split wide to the far side with Russell Davis in the slot. Third and ten now from a little more than the 10-yard line. Siason gets plenty of time. That's Hill. Touchdown. Greg Hill, his 14th touchdown reception of the year. Clemson defense dropped a little bit deep. The linebackers dropped into the end zone on this play. And uh, that's very unusual. There's no reason to be in the end zone. If the guy catches it in front of you, it's a touchdown. You want to get to about the four or five yard line. After the kick, we'll take a look at that on the replay. Jess Atkinson who has 75 point-after touchdowns in a row, an ACC record, is 24 out of 24. This year, we'll be trying the kick. Wilson, the snapper, 
He sides into the holder as the kick is up, and it is true blue right through the uprights. Maryland on the scoreboard. Clemson 14 to 7 over Maryland with 11:55 remaining. Let's take a look at Greg Hill. He's in motion. He has to be covered. Now watch. He's in front of Watson. Now all of these guys are in the end zone. Look at. See Wall there. Wall's dropping back into the end zone. That's the end zone line, and nobody covers him because he comes across the field. It's man-to-man -man coverage generally on the goal line. Now here's it from Isaiah's point of view. He can't believe it. Hill has come. See, see the Clemson players. They're in the end zone. That was Mac in the end zone. You have to be a little bit out of the end zone, obviously, as I said. So the 10-yard touchdown pass capping a 14-yard uh, uh, drive. We'll be right back with more Clemson football after this. Getting set to kick off. Atkinson, number 90. And there you see the deep receivers, Rulak and Williams. Williams is to the far side, and Williams will take it. Three yards deep in the end zone. Breaks to the outside. Gets a block that he needs. Penalty flag goes down, however. Jimmy Riggs, number 99, was the one that threw the block. They're going to call out a clip, I believe. The Maryland player had his back to Riggs. It was a nice block, but the fella's supposed to be looking at you. What do, you, what do you say? Hey, I'm going to block you, turn around. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at this kickoff again. I think you'll see it. Williams does a great job setting up the block. In fact, he sets it up almost too well. Watch the right of your screen right there. See Riggs on the ground and the player with his back to you? That was Vernon Carter, who was smart enough to turn his back to the line and get it, and get it called back. Tigers starting their drive from the 11-yard line. Two to the second penalty against Clemson. 15 yards have been marched off against the Tigers. F late to Mack. And Kevin gets over the 15-yard line for a gain of four yards on the play. Kevin Mack with 150 yards against Duke. Been a workhorse in this ball game, and he's not feeling too well getting up very slow, holding that wrist. Running backs hurt their wrist, the back of their wrist where the hand joins the arm. That's a very common injury because they, they use that arm to fend off uh, tacklers. And, of course, all that plastic with the helmet and the shoulder pad, that, that's not uncommon. It happens to linebackers, too. You use that part of your body quite a bit. Braxton Williams comes back into the ball game. He's already had an outstanding game in a reserve role backing up Mac. Second and six from the 15. Rulak in motion. Goes back to Stacy Driver. Driver couldn't get out of that spin. And gets to the 19-yard line. Fossett making the tackle. Fossett, an outfielder in the Toronto organization in professional baseball. And he did uh, go through spring trap practice, however, as a legitimate freshman. Clemson, 127 yards through the air to Maryland, 61. Maryland, though, getting it together in their last drive. Clemson by seven points. Two tight ends, Dunn and Riggs into the lineup now on a third and three from the 19. Braxton Williams carried. Looks like he's short of the first down. He's short because Maryland blitzed on that play. They had Wilson and Fawcett stacked very tight behind the defensive line. They both came. From our angle, it looked like he was short, Kevin, but they just now gave him the first down. No, not even a measurement. Well, let me say this. He just made the first down because Maryland, <laughs> Maryland blitz. It was a good defensive play, but not good enough. Braxton Williams, three carries, 26 yards in the game. Williams to the far side, and we've got Boyer to the near side. First and 10 from the 22. Epley dropping straight back. Great protection. Over the middle, it goes to Dunn. He gets up to the 34-yard line. I think they'll place it where his knee went down. First and ten again. Fawcett made the tackle on the tight end. This is play action. Watch Wilson now. You should never let a receiver cross in front of you. Take a look at Dunn as he crosses in front. Wilson's got to hit him. See, that's the man that caught the ball. Now Wilson says, uh-oh, I got to get him. See, now you're going to see it right after Wilson decides, and Fawcett gets there first. That was Wilson's man. He should have bopped him as he came across the line. At the 35, Epley making his case even stronger for ACC Player of the Year. He hands off this time, and to the 40-yard line is Stacy Driver. Epley with 139 yards through the air, six out of eight so far here in the first half. 
Tyrone Furman made the tackle along with Terry Burke for Maryland. Gain of five yards on the play, so five yards to go for another first down at the 40. Driver with 34 yards now in six carries. Epley coming to the line of scrimmage. Two touchdown passes already in this ball game. 9-17 remaining second quarter. That's Ray Williams in motion. Epley hands to the first man, Braxton Williams, who pulls his way to the 46-yard line. That's good enough for the first down, and Eric Wilson making this, uh, the tackle, the inside linebacker. Not many of Clemson's backs are that big. Braxton Williams is a load, 6'2", 220 pounds. As Clemson backs go, he's a pretty big tiger, and he's making his presence felt out here. Four carries, 31 yards for Williams. First down from the 46. Braxton Didn't Williams. fool too many people that time as uh, Williams was picked off by Furman. Kevin Mack considered to be maybe the best all-around back in the entire ACC. And that's with the backs in the ACC, that's not a bad compliment to have. Braxton Williams comes in, he's big, he's tough, but he doesn't have the versatility that Kevin Mack has. Mack's a good receiver, even though they don't throw that much to him, and a great blocker and an open field runner. You won't get that from Braxton. Boyer and Williams. The wide receivers, but he goes to his tight end again. This time, good defense at the 40-yard line. It was intended for Dunn and Covington. Al Covington, with 18 tackles on the year, shows us some very good agility in batting the ball down. All right, if you're going three deep, you better have some good defensive backs, at least three of them. Al Covington, normally a backup to Krause, made a nice play on it. So it'll be third and seven from the 49-yard line. Butler and Rulak are the wide receivers. Stacy Driver, the tailback, as Rulak goes in motion. Driver gets around the tackler behind the line of scrimmage. He's got the first down out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Furman almost had him behind the line of scrimmage, but a terrific sidestep by Stacy Driver, and Mesner's finally called upon to make the tackle out of bounds. The flag on this play, Driver's 5'8", 175 pounds. He plays like he's 6'5", 260. Missed tackle there. That's a big guy, Furman, who bench presses 465, can't hold Driver's legs, and this is just great ability. Everybody else would have gone out of bounds. Driver puts his foot down, stops on a dime, and goes upfield. Penalty will be, though, on Clemson. And it's a big one. 15 yards. It'll be a clipping call. Unfortunate call against the Tigers, but a good break for Maryland. That was a first down play. It'll be now third down and 20 yards to go for a first down. 30 yards marched off against Clemson here in the first half. So far, no penalty yardage for Maryland. Third and 20 from the 36. Epley goes long. He's got his man done and a nice play at the last second. Covington again. They're yelling for interference. Covington came in late. Take a look at Dunn. He's going to get loose. The passing game's got to be wide open against the wide tackle six, and this team has been running on Maryland all day. This is not a bad pass. He's looking into the sun. Look at Covington. He actually crosses over, but after the ball, it's hard to see from there, the ball actually crossed over Dunn's head before Covington hit him. Hatcher for two punts has averaged 36 yards. Joe Kraus is deep to receive the punt. Hatcher ranked 11th in the nation of putting coming to this game, averaging 43.6, sends him back to the nine-yard line. Out of bounds at the 17. They're marking the ball. First and 10 for Maryland, then at the 17-yard line. With the score, Clemson 14, Maryland 7. We'll pause now for a word from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Teams. He's the long snapper. Flipping penalty puts the ball back on the eight-yard line where it's first and ten for the Terrapins. 7.47 remaining to be played, and they cannot hear the snap call. A terrific crowd here on the final home game at Clemson making so much noise down there at the end of Death Valley that Esiason feels that he just can't uh, give the audible. One thing about Clemson people, they don't just come to the game. They know all the particulars. They know the significance of this game. They know that Clemson cannot win the official ACC title. They know Maryland can. They're not yelling just to yell. They're yelling for something. Sadonic and Joyner in the backfield now for Maryland. Esiason shouts back the signal. And timeout again. 
Of course, you've heard many times the worst thing you can do as a quarterback is acknowledge the crowd is bothering you because they're just going to yell and scream as loud as they can. And yet, if you're on your own, well, certainly inside your own 10-yard line on your 9-yard line, you don't want to call signals. Now the fans are waving as the Clemson players, of course, asked to ask the crowd for silence. Most officials will tell you the best thing to do is just snap the ball and get one play underway to cool things down. At the eight yard line for the first and ten play. The science is taking a long time with the snap count. Pitches back to Joyner. Good containment. James Robinson. Childers and McSwain moved that play inside. And there was everybody there to make the stop led by James Robinson. One of the very subtle things that happens when the crowd yells is, remember, you've got two wide receivers that can't hear the snap count. So most of the time, you call a running play because your backs are the closest people to you next to the center, and they can hear it. Your chances of getting a running play off are a lot better. Davis and Hill. Hill to the far side. Davis put to the near side on a second and nine from the nine-yard line. charge to Clemson because of the excessive noise, I believe. Look at Danny Ford. <laughs> Don't blame me. I can't do anything about it. Well, yeah, he loves it. You got to love it when the crowd gets involved. It's going to cost them if they keep it up. But this is the type of enthusiasm that makes Clemson the great power that they are, and you don't want to throw water on this crowd. You let them yell. You know, Kevin, i got to make a statement here because uh, when Georgia and Clemson get together, and I have been on the field at times when that, those two teams have met here in Death Valley, this particular noise level right here, the decibels are not as hot. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, it gets to be deafening down there, and they still play the football game. A lot of emotion here in South Carolina around Clemson. Remember, this has been a tough year for the Tigers. The coaching staff, remarkable job. This team playing with no bowl game in sight. No chance of a bowl game is now 7-1-1, one, one, nationally ranked. you got to give these guys a lot of credit, and the fans a lot of credit. They come every week, 70, 80,000 people. They love their football, and they're going to yell. The officials for today's game, second and nine, still from the nine, with 7.03 remaining. Hill is split right. And we've got Davis to the left now. Back shifting into the eye. That's Joyner still at tailback. But Donick, your fullback. The Sison goes back into the goal. That dog gets the big rush that should have been holding as Perry had his shirt torn off. And dropping the ball was Hill at the 35-yard line. What a break for Clemson. As Perry rushed in, he almost lost a shirt. Remember I told you you usually run a running play? Well, Clemson's thinking the same thing. Look at Boomer. He's trapped. we got a blitz here on the outside, a defensive back coming. Everybody's after Boomer. He gets away. And then Hill wide open because Clemson's not thinking pass. A little bit of blown coverage. A little bit. Quite a bit of blown coverage. And he does the thing that you can't do. He drops the ball. And look at Maryland's side. I look at right behind him. Oh, my goodness. If they would have had tearaway jerseys, Perry would have been semi-nude by now. Ron Salt had his arms in the grasp of that shirt. Third and nine. Beautiful hit on Davis. Ronald Watson, number 31. And so the punt team for Maryland comes back into the game. It's a great series for Clemson and the crowd. They all got into the game. Russell Davis going to have to catch that one if he goes to the pros. Got to catch him coming over the middle of Paul, a ball perfectly thrown by his eyes. Let's see if they put the rush on. Billy Davis is standing at the, the Maryland 44-yard line. Sadler just lobs a punt up to Davis at the 38-yard line, and he's hit heavily flagged down as he did signal for the fair catch. It wasn't very exaggerated, but uh, Schultz didn't see it anyway. Eddie Schultz and that'll tack more yardage on. Billy Davis, 6'2", 195-pound senior from Alexandria, Virginia. 
He did not put his hand up very high to wave. Well, and he's running, too, and it's very difficult. And Davis uh, is very valuable to have a guy who can catch a pass, uh, catch a kick like this. He can save a lot of yardage. The Maryland player should have been able to stop. He's got his knee down. I think that's why they're calling the personal foul. And I don't know why he couldn't stop. He should have stopped. That's uh, Schultz, Eddie Schultz for Maryland. So terrific field position now for the Tigers, leading by seven points with 6.43 remaining to be played here in the second quarter. Mack and Driver, the backfield. You see Kevin Mack back into the ball game now. And he gets the call. Good strength, but he can't go through four people, and he gets to the 20-yard line. Tyrone Furman hitting first. You listen to the crowd and you watch Clemson go up and down the field, but the score is 14 to 7. Maryland is within seven points. It's hard to believe with all the offense and defense that Clemson has played. Maryland has hung right in there. This is a big series for the Tigers. Cheatham out of the ball game. Steve Reese comes back in. Charleston and Alley are the wide receivers. Second and seven from the 20 yard line. Epley on the option, takes it to the 15, two yards shy of the first down. Terry Burke making the tackle. Burke playing on that inside linebacker spot. We talked about Mike Epley. He's a candidate and a leading candidate, I would expect, for ACC Player of the Year. That option really indicates what a great athlete he is. There are very few quarterbacks, we mentioned before, that can drop back, stay in the pocket, and also run the option effectively. Mike Epley is that type of player. A great, great all-around athlete and a triple threat on offense. The wide receiver team of Butler and Rulak now come in with the play as Epley. Short drop, Rulak the ball to the seven-yard line. Clarence Baldwin finally made the hit. He leads the team with seven interceptions, but he didn't have much of a chance on a one-on-one -on -one situation there with Terrence Rulak. Rulak runs the great pattern, and Epley, the pass was the key. Epley threw the ball exactly where it had to have been thrown. Threw it across the field. Very dangerous, especially on the goal line with man-to-man. -man. But he and Rulak have been, well, untouchable all year. Rulak second on this team in receptions with 13 catches coming into the game, averaging 15.2 a catch. First down and goal to goal from the six-yard line. Mack up the middle, touchdown! Jeff Litton, the center, with a good block, and they opened up the holes up the middle. rushing touchdowns. Clemson has gone over number 60, James Farr, just to the left of the center as they move everybody out. Maryland had trouble up the middle against Auburn last week. They're tackling. And right there, two missed tackles as Kevin Mack, out earlier with an injury, powers in for a touchdown. Clemson leads 21-7. Bob Pauling now with 20, 66 point after touchdown kicks in a row. Clemson, 21, Maryland, 7. We'll be back with more Clemson football after this word from Burger King. Hopeful of receiving Donald Igwebuike's kickoff. Steps forward, pounds it. This one won't go anywhere except through the end zone. So Clemson, after the defense did a good job on Maryland and a 15-yard penalty on the punt, went 23 yards in four plays, capped off by Max six-yard run. And they go 14 points up on Maryland as the Terrapins take over now at their 20-yard line. So you see the non-returnable facts and figures for Igwebuike, 36 times out of 48 kickoffs. Hill to the far side. And we've got Eric Holder now coming to the near side on the first down play with 509 remaining. Fumble! William Devane, I should say James Robinson, was in on the quarterback. He forced the fumble. William Devane pouncing on the football. And great field position. Well, if you want a turnover, how nice it is inside the 20-yard line. 
so amazing. Robinson has been the big play man for the last three or four weeks. He's literally in the backfield, and Devane is the guy, although he only plays half the time. Look at Robinson. He's in, in Boomer's back pocket. Devane had three fumble recoveries coming in, and he just seems to be around the ball. He picks it up. The fumble on the handoff. He knows the running back never really had the ball. Kevin Mack, the ball carrier. Over the line of scrimmage, gets over the 15 to about the 13-yard line where he's met by a coach, Pete Coach. It'll be a gain of three yards on the play, second and seven from the 13. Mack now with 35 yards and nine carries, Kevin. Turbin's had a, uh, a goal line stand last week and then a 99-yard drive. I know they're probably thinking about that again this week. Their backs are literally to the wall. Flowers is the tailback. Mack, your fullback, and that's Ray Williams in motion. Flowers has a good initial hole as he takes it to the 10-yard line. Terry Burke making the tackle. Burke is second straight tackle from that linebacker spot. Linebackers are busy for this ball club because uh, the blocking at the line of scrimmage has been giving some running room to the Tigers. Well, the white tackle six protects linebackers too. It lets them. Uh, it lets them. They're they're usually covered by a lineman. Lets them run loose in the secondary and make tackles. They better make tackles. Butler split right. Rulak to the left now with 3:57 remaining second quarter. And off to Mac up the middle. Very close to the first down. They have to get to the six-yard line for a first down for Clemson. Jim Joyce and Terry Burke combining for the tackle. Hudson on that offensive line pointing, saying, yes, we've got it. Hudson getting some good playing time in this ball game. Alex Hudson, 6'5", 265, a two-year letterman senior from Spartanburg, South Carolina. What an oddity. The best lineman on Clemson acknowledged is James Farr. He's also the smallest. First down, Clemson. He's also the smallest. He's 240 pounds, which is really tiny by professional standards and small, smallish by college standards. But if you ever saw this guy in person without his pads, he's a pretty sturdy 240 pounds. Number 60, James Farr, the left guard. He's an All-American candidate. Ellis, Cheatham, and Riggs on the right side of that offensive line with 335 remaining second quarter. First down at the six. Flowers. And he moves the ball over that five-yard line down to the three. Tyrone Furman making the stop. Notice the hitting in this game. The hitting, some of the games we've covered this year, the hitting wasn't all that crisp. And this game is a lot of good hits, a lot of body strength, a lot of good athletes out there, a lot of movement. And that always creates hitting. When people go down, they go down hard in a game like this. It takes a lot of character to go 60 minutes on either team. Second and goal at the three-yard line. Epley hands the ball to Mack, and Mack trying to spin, just can't quite get in. He didn't get in, but almost through a pile. Kevin Mack was in there somewhere driving for the goal line, and he look how close that ball is. He picked up two, three yards in heavy traffic. Credit the hit for Furman, as Mack now in 11 carries has 41 yards. It's third and one. The Terrapins called upon several times in the last two weeks to make this type of stop. Mack and Braxton Williams and uh, Flowers all in the backfield, and Epley wants a timeout. The reason for timeout, the reason for confusion is that a goal line offense is a different, it's a different offense. You have a different set of plays on the goal line. Most teams will. And you've been running up and down the field, the middle of the field, using your regular game plan, and then you've got to shift gears into this goal line offense. And sometimes, quite frankly, some of the guys don't remember or they don't line up right. And, and Epley, being experienced quarterback, says, hey, we got a touchdown at stake. Let's call time out and go on to the side. Brian Raber comes into the tight end spot, and Flowers comes out of the ball game. Epley has passed for 149 yards. Mack has run for 41 yards. Driver, 38 yards. And Flowers, seven, Flowers has run for seven yards in this ball game. But Epley has been the big key, the solidifier, and the guy that has kept them on the move. Two minutes, 20 seconds remaining second quarter. Clemson 21-7, knocking on the door once again. We've got three tight ends into the ballgame right now. K.D. Dunn, Jim Riggs, and Brian Raper. Angle comes in for Hudson at the left tackle spot. Kevin Mack and Braxton Williams, the two fullbacks, are also in the ballgame. 
So we've got all the beef up on the line right now with Kevin Mack, the lone uh, remaining running back. He goes right into the end zone behind Braxton Williams, who was pulling. Braxton Williams lining up at a wingback spot, and he was the first blocker through the hole. Nothing shifty about that play. You take your biggest back behind your best lineman and give it to the best all-around back in the ACC, number 27, Kevin Mack. And that's a recipe for a touchdown. That's exactly what they got. Max, uh, fifth touchdown of the year. Make it six because he's got two in this ball game. And the kick is up. And Pauling's kick is good again. Mr. Automatic makes it 28 to 7. Clemson over Maryland. Well, you know what's coming. Watch Braxton right there, number 34. He cuts up. We got a block by swing. Number 59 going down, and Kevin Mack, Ingle, excuse me, 59, and Kevin Mack just too much for Wilson. He's got too much leverage underneath Wilson, and he's in standing up. Mack's one-yard touchdown run, capping off a drive in six plays, 16 yards after the fumble recovery here in the second quarter. It's good blocking on the goal line, excellent blocking by Clemson on the goal line. Really, really tough on a guy like Ingle to get across a block like that. He did, and Mack, of course... Well, if you've seen any Clemson games this year, you know Kevin Mack is a quality back. I believe he'll be an excellent back in the pros, too. He's the type of back that uh, professional teams like to see. Good endurance factor, good quickness, can catch a pass. He can do it all. He blocks, he does everything. Catches pass, as I said, and, uh, and uh, Clemson offense, uh, Clemson uh, coaching staff speaks very highly of Kevin Mack. Tommy Neal is uh, not quite to his end zone line. Getting back to receive as Donald Igwebuike prepares to kick off once again with 2.17 remaining before halftime. Igwebuike will put this one in the stands, it looks like. Not quite in the stands. I thought that was one of those balloons coming back. So the Terrapins will take over at their 20-yard line. The Clemson defense has just kept the Terrapins back to the wall. And we'll see if they have it in them once again. Yeah, but Clemson, although they've been strong early in the game, have not been strong late. They've given up 70 points in the fourth quarter and only scored 44. They have had trouble in the third and fourth quarter. Esiason at quarterback. Holder and Hill, the wide receivers. Out of the pro set. Double pumping Esiason. They're keeping him contained, however, and he gets the ball away. Complete at the 35 to the fullback, Badonik. And Badonik makes his way for good yardage. Jeff Settle makes the stop, but not after he was wide, wide open on the play. Well, Boomer makes the play. Boomer with his pump fake, you're going to see. He makes the play. Badonik gets wide open, and Boomer's running around back there right now. Everybody's wondering what he's going to do. And Badonik just standing out there with his hand open. On the first and ten from the 42-yard line. No gain on the play as Terrence Mack comes in to make the tackle on Badonik. Best hit we've seen out of Terrence Mack all year. And there's a smile from a, a young person watching the game. Good hit from Terrence Mack, but it's uh, yet yeah, for a yard gain. Second down, nine yards to go from the 43. Sison gets it over to his fullback. He's going to get on the ball just in case it was ruled a lateral, but it was not. But Donick, the incompleted pass. You know, there might have been a little inexperience factor, too, when Jeff Wells saw that the quarterback was scrambling back there. He didn't look at the fullback anymore. He's well, you do forget. You know, you're out. Yeah, and Wells is the backup to Pickett. Pickett went out earlier with an injury, and you do you do forget. And uh, number 88, Wells, he's, but Don is kind of drifting out there. That can happen to you. Boomer Esiason is thrown through the air for 83 yards here in the first half. Craig Crawford into the ballgame of the defense with 131 remaining here in the second quarter. 28-7, Clemson leading. The Boomer is back to throw another pass. Too low. He had his man in the open. Chris Knight over the middle, the tight end. And Esiason now is disgusted with himself. Rips the chin strap off his helmet as he goes to the sideline. An Auburn player last week made the comment, I don't know how anybody could be as accurate as Esiason in passing. Boomer has not been accurate today. He's thrown a lot of passes off the mark. Sadler is averaging in four punts, 36.5 a kick. 
Lofts a high one this time that Billy Davis weighs for the fair catch and takes the ball at the 21-yard line. So the Tigers will take over with one minute, 18 seconds still remaining in the second quarter. Their offensive unit coming out of the field. Flowers will be at tailback. Dunn at the tight end. Mack at fullback. Alley. Riggs also into the lineup. Reed Engel at left tackle. James Farr at left guard. They'll swing at center. From the 22. Epley hands to Flowers, and Flowers making his way to the little bit over the 25-yard line, maybe ball placement at the 26 before he's collapsed upon. The clock continues to run. Minute five remaining. Tom McHale making the tackle. It's a spot where the Maryland defense has to be very careful. Uh, they think Clemson's going to sit on this lead, and Clemson, of course, offensively, their strength is the run, and that's how you sit on a lead. Any one of these guys, Driver, Flowers, Max could break loose in that secondary and go all the way. So Maryland has to keep their intensity up even though there's about 40 seconds remaining. That shadow you see there is being cast by a big paw balloon that's floating above the stadium. On the second and six from the 26, right up the middle. Can take the clock down. Kevin Mack could not break through. Timeout is called by Maryland as Mack gets to the 30-yard line. Maryland earlier has had some pressure on the punter of Clemson. I know Bobby Ross has noticed that, and he figures maybe if he can get him to punt, he might be able to block this punt. They've come very close a couple of times. 31 seconds left of the uh, first half. Epley coming over to the sideline to check things out with his coaching staff. We've seen a lot of maturity in this young quarterback. We say young quarterback because he didn't get a great deal of playing experience in the past. But has stepped right into the striding role and not only as a fine football player, but as a starter on the basketball team. And also is on the All-American Academic ballot that just goes out, uh, well, it hasn't gone out yet. It'll go out next week. He's the only player from the ACC to be on that academic team ballot. He's the type of guy, not only did you like to have on your team, but <laughs> you'd love to have him at quarterback. He's right at the top. That played 7 of 11 for 149 yards and two touchdowns here in the first half. Third and two. Goes to Kevin Mack, and Mack gets the first down. So that'll stop the clock with 27 seconds remaining before halftime. Messner, Bruce Messner making the tackle. 6'6", 263 pounds, only a freshman. And again, they went over far. When they needed the yardage, they go to the left side. and Flowers in the backfield. It goes to Mack for short yardage and that'll take the clock down to end the first half. They call it Death Valley. And there you see the orange clad Clemson Tigers going to the locker room here at halftime. With the score, Clemson 28, Maryland 7. We'll be back with halftime after these words from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. 28 to 7 as we start the third quarter. Donald Igwebuike set to kick off. And it's Tommy Neal, number 48. The single safety. There you see him just inside his own five-yard line. The squib kick. Gets through him, and he'll wisely put the knee down in the back of the end zone. So if you're Maryland now, Kevin Kiley, what do you try to do against the awesome Clemson defense who's done about everything possible to that Maryland Terrapin offense. I say boom, 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 and more boom. I <laughs> get Boomer to loosen it up and air it out. And hope that his receivers hold on to the football. Holder comes to the near side, and we've got Hill to the far side. That's William Perry. Well, Robinson James did, Robinson. James Robinson did exactly what you're supposed to do. If you get movement on the offense, then you make them pay. And I, I don't know that that's the case. But Robinson just leveled somebody. They're going to call it. Used to be you could do that and, and get away with it. But if you actually do level him. Well, they're going to know you. If he moves and you hit him. Then well, you uh, can hit him, but you can't level him, can you? 
Well, he just leveled in. <laughs> and he got a penalty. <laughs> Illegal procedure. First and five at the 25. Joiner comes out of the guy. Long count. That's Joiner with the football. Trips on the handoff and uh, barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Let's take a look now at the two quarterbacks in this game. We mentioned them earlier in the uh, telecast. One of the reasons for this, I believe, is that the Clemson coaching staff doesn't put Epley in a position where he has to do things. They run well, they throw short well, they throw long, they run the option. Epley always has high percentage passes. Aziasen, you see him right there, number seven, is more uh, the main man in the offense. They expect him to go downfield. He's in a position and has been in a position in this game where he's had to pass, and the Clemson defense knew it. So his statistics, I think, reflect it. Epley, looking at him right there, number 14, has been outstanding all year, and he's a man that works well within the system. He's an outstanding part of an outstanding system. Aziazin may be a little bigger than the system offensively for Maryland. I think it's interesting to note uh, that on this last play, the long count. I think Clemson was getting uh, the jump on Isaiah's in snap count in the first half. That's why, especially the play, you remember where Perry came in and they had the fumble? I think that they, they were just, they were sitting on his snap count. Had an injury, that's uh, Chucky Richardson. Number 56, yeah. Chucky Richardson, he looks to be all right. They were sitting on Isaiah's in snap count, and so he went to a long count. I think they picked that up at halftime, and you'll see him stagger his count a little more. Sullivan comes to the near side on a second and five at the 25. It's holders split right. Perry's at that middle guard spot. Isaiasen checking off some sides as he hands to Joyner, and Joyner comes right into the arms of Jim Scott. The lad from Alexandria, Virginia, just wouldn't let him up. Well, there's a negative side, too, of that uh, sitting on a long count for the offense. The offense gets down in the crouch. They're ready to go. And when you sit, you kind of settle into your stance. It doesn't help you get off the ball real well. But I think you, you saw examples there. You see Robinson uh, at left tackle. He jumped back, and then he jumped back on defense or jumped over and back. That's because they are sitting on his eyes in snap count, and uh, he may be able to mess him up a little bit if he changes it up. Joyner coming into the ballgame averaging 4.7 yards a carry. He's having his average whittled away now in 10 carries. He has 19 yards. Third and seven from the 23-yard line for the Mar Maryland club. His eyes and pump fakes. The ball is deflected nicely by linebacker Keith Williams. Keith is 6'4". Reggie Pleasant got the pressure on the play. So Sather's going to have to come in, who's averaged 37.4 yards per punt in five tries previous. He's standing inside his own 10-yard line. It looks like Clemson here in the beginning moments of the second half will have good field position once again. Billy Davis is standing on his 40-yard line. Clemson leading it 28-7. Would like to get that momentum back here in the second half. A high floater. Davis calls for the fair catch, grabs it at the 38-yard line. That's where the Tigers will take over. This is Art Ekman with Kevin Kiley from Memorial Stadium in Clemson. We're in the third quarter with the score, Clemson 28, Maryland 7. Clemson takes over on the 39-yard line, first and 10. The defense holding once again. Epley at quarterback, Ray Williams and Terrence Rulak, the outside receivers. The fake to Stacy Driver, Epley over the center, right through the hands of Dunn, who was in the open. Penalty flag on the play, could be a hold. And Krause coming up number three behind Dunn. Had his eye on Dunn's back. Had he been looking for the ball, he might have picked it off. Let's take a look at it. Epley straight back. Remember, this is the same guy. Runs the option, too. Good drop back passer. Dunn is open. Epley gets it a little bit high, and KD goes up for it. Now, here's number three. See him, Krause, coming in. The ball goes right past him because he was looking at Dunn's back. More intent, probably, on hitting Dunn than getting the ball. Number three for the Tigers. Sheldon Boyer comes in at the wide receiver spot. There you see Dunn, number 81. Ellis, number 64, at the right tackle spot. It's Kevin Mack and Stacey Driver, the backfield. As Epley goes right back on a second and 10 from the 39 again. Mack breaks through one tackler, breaks through another, gets to midfield of the first down. Kevin Mack just wouldn't give up. 
Finally, Joe Krause puts him out of bounds after Jim Joyce hit him the first time. Well, it's Sumac all the way. Maryland, a very physical team. And watch Kevin Mack as he sets up the block, and now he's going to drift towards the bottom of your screen for the screen pass, number 27. He picks it off. Kevin Mack is not all that big. There's a miss there, still on his feet. Now watch him. This is a pretty good shot defensively, and Mack pulls away there, and finally it's just overpowered. That play really knows how to set up a play like that, too, doesn't he? Mack on the ball carry. And uh, Brian Baker making the stop from an outside linebacker spot. Well, a lot of times we isolate on on the ball, on the fellow that carries the ball. That was Kevin Mack in that case. But you're right, Art. Uh, Epley, he's just he's just a smart player and a great athlete. And those two, that combination is hard to beat. He's the type of guy that can make you think one thing and then bang, he'll hit you in another spot. He's got 160 yards through the air. Ray Williams coming to the near side, and we've got Boyer to the far side on a second and seven from the 47-yard line. Epley waiting for lots of time goes over the driver has some nice blocking and Florida the driver breaks back. Stacy Driver finally is upended and two teams at the 28 yard line. Fawcett makes the tackle and a yellow flag in the air. Some beautiful pull blocking by Dale Swing and Steve Reese. Takes a whole year to get to know what everybody's going to do. They know Driver likes to cut back. Look at Epley, just standing back there looking for somebody to throw it to. Driver gets it immediately, cuts back across the grain. You can look at the Maryland players falling down. Good blocks coming back. And now it's Driver with one man to beat. And he points them out. Get him. Maryland catches up, but a little late hit there, and it's going to be another 15 yards personal foul. It'll be a first down on the Maryland inside the Maryland 14-yard line. 12-22 remaining third quarter. It's Rulak to the far side. And we've got Butler coming to the near side. Stacy Driver, the tailback in the eye. Epley hands to Mack, and Mack is pulling his way inside the 10-yard line to the 8-yard line. Maryland has been penalized only three times in this game, but for 44 yards. Tyrone Furman and Fossett, Chuck Fossett, making the tackle on the last play. Overall, Clemson is always penalized more than the opposition or has been all year. They've had a rough time. 76 penalties, 603 yards coming in. Opposition, 54, 468. 61 yards and 17 carries for Mack in this ball game. This time it goes to Driver. Driver has nowhere to run. On the second and five play from the eight-yard line, Brian Baker was there to make the, uh, the tackle on uh, Stacy Driver. The thing that's worked, worked best against Maryland today has been the short pass and the run. And that, yeah, there's a staggering turtle. He's saying, well, it wasn't supposed to be like this. Uh, Clemson's game plan, obviously, hit those short passes, let their athletes get out in the flat and run. And that's a good offense against the wide tackle six. Third and four for the first down at the seven. Epley looking for Rulak. He's got it. Second time around. Touchdown. Jim Joyce was giving Epley some pressure. Epley was looking at Rulak all the way, and then he was forced out of the pocket by Joyce. Rulak then got into the open, coming back toward his quarterback and made the reception number 15. There you see him coming off the field. Rejoicing, Rulak, who's had a fine day today, gets his fourth touchdown on the year. Falling to kick. Mr. Automatic out of the hold of Peretti. The kick is up and the kick is good. With 10.57 remaining to be played here in the third quarter, Clemson takes a 35-7 lead over the University of Maryland. Let's take another look, Kevin. We open the broadcast talking about Boomer and Mike Epley. Mike Epley makes the play. The coverage is good there. The pressure is from Maryland, but Epley gets away, uses that good speed, and now Rulak is open. Touchdown. Rulak will get the reception. Epley gets the TD pass, but it's Epley that makes the play. With the score, Clemson 35, Maryland 7. We'll pause now for a word from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Big boy Buike to kick off again. Clemson moving seven plays, 61 yards. Capped by the seven-yard touchdown toss to Rulak from Epley. 
Tommy Neal takes it in the end zone and decides not to run it out. So the Terrapins take over again from the 20 yard line. They've really not had very good field position. I wonder if Donald gets tired. He looks tired going to the sideline. Maybe he's just bored. Nobody ever runs his kicks back. Got some players asking their fans to quiet down. As Hillen Davis, the wideouts for the Terrapins on the first and ten from the 20. Tyson has his man. Oh, what a hit on the fullback. Jeff Settle came in on Badonic. Perfect hit, and uh, well, it had to be a perfect time play without a penalty flag. You may remember that Badonic is the fellow that knocked Edgar Pickett out of the game. And here's a little retribution for you. You don't ever want a receiver to leave his feet for a pass, and this is the reason. Badonic's not that tall to begin with. He goes up, and without those legs under you, this is what happens. Suttle lowers the boom. What a hit. Second and 10 now from the 20. The boomer is only 9 of 21 through the air, and he fades back to try again. Everybody covered, and he swings it to the near side of Joyner. He can't hold out of the football. I think he heard some steps coming. Some pounding from the Orange fans. Well, that was Milton closing on him. Listen to this crowd. Clemson knows they have to pass, and you just don't want to be in that type of situation against Clemson. They turn those guys loose on the front and get the defensive secondary geared up for the pass in Death Valley. We got a long 10:43 to go here in the third quarter, and I'm glad I'm not wearing a red helmet right now. Hill goes to the far side and Davis to the near side on a third and ten, still from the 20 with 10:43 remaining third quarter. The Boomer rolls out, try to get away from that pursuit. Now he's wafting one long to Davis, intercepted at the 40-yard line. Billy Davis, his second interception of the year, and Davis is mine. A three-year letterman senior hauls another one in. You know, the interceptions on this club are so well spaced out. McSwain with two interceptions on the year. Reggie Pleasant with two. We've got the second one now for Davis. Tyrone Davis leads the club in interceptions with four. Errington has one. Childers one. This is a heck of an effort by Boomer just to get loose. But Davis is guarding two guys out here. Now, those two receivers should have separated. They'd have had a better chance. The fullback, Killer Mack, booms his way for a first down on the first and ten. He gets to the 46-yard line when Eric Wilson makes the tackle. There was some question at the beginning of the year about motivation for Clemson not being eligible for a bowl. If you've got any questions now, take a look at the record and the scoreboard. I think they wanted to tell everyone that they're the best in the ACC. Well, they're definitely making an impression on Maryland here in the third quarter. Mack was 72 yards in 18 carries. Charleston and Alley, the wideouts. Braxton is the new fullback. And it's Braxton who gets piled up behind the line of scrimmage. Berman making the tackle. We've got a penalty flag down, however. We'll see what the officials saw that we didn't from up here. <laughs> it looks like it might be a push-off or illegal use of hands. That it is. They're going to kill this poor Tiger. Might be a personal foul on that receiver alley on the far side. Maryland's fourth penalty for 59 yards marched off. When they've done it, they've uh, done it big. And, they've all, and the penalties primarily have been in Maryland territory, moving Clemson close to the goal line. Bobby Ross saying, I know Death Valley was bad. I didn't know it was this bad. Ross has built a wonderful program there at Maryland. And it certainly has the fans in that area excited about their football team. Braxton Williams on the pitch. Braxton Williams showing some finesse running there, as well as quickness as he gets out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Joe Krause making the push out. Braxton Williams looks like a small William Perry. <laughs> if there is such a thing. <laughs> well, he showed us some good quickness there on that play. 36 remaining in the third quarter. Clemson on the drive again. After the intercepted pass, they've got a second and four at the 24. Charleston and Alley, the receivers. Epley on 
the option out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Joe Krause again from that safety spot. Take a look at what Kevin Mack can do for you when he's not carrying the ball. When you run the option, the fake is all important. Look at him as he ducks his head, makes the block, lets people think that he has the ball. Again, he's the one that makes the block. See? Look at number 92. He can't get there because Mack made the block and Epley gets loose. Mack Hale, number 92. Thought he had himself a tackle when Mack came through the line. 9.31 remaining third quarter. They put it up the middle this time to Kevin Mack on the first and ten. Make it all the more impressive. 35 points for Clemson. This is the same, basically the same defense that beat Pittsburgh and held them to 10 points. Pittsburgh is a heck of a program. This is a very fine football team, the Maryland Terrapins, and Clemson is dominating as they dominated North Carolina last week. Mack picking up a yard on the play. Second and nine from the 14 with nine minutes on the clock, third quarter. Mack now with 73 yards on 19 carries. Stacy Driver. Oh, he's all the way. Touchdown. James Barr and Dale Swing open up the alley, partner. Let me correct myself on that play because Jeff Litton was in there at center. Number 51. Stacy Driver just exploded through that hole. Polling out of Paredes hole for another try. 41 to 7. An incredible ball game for Clemson here against Maryland. Kick is up and the kick is good. Polling is closing in on Atkinson. What is momentum? Is it an intangible, or is it people just making blocks? Let's take a look at the Clemson offense. KD Dunn, the tight end. Hey, not involved in the play. Let's take a look. That's good block there. He's not going to get in. Driver's already in. Now let's take a look at Driver, the tailback. A seam is all he needs. He's so quick. Look at the orange shirts creating a seam. Wilson is blocked number 55. He's the linebacker. And from here on, Stacy walks in. 41 points make it 42 for Clemson, 7 for Maryland. 8.51 remaining third quarter. We'll be back with more Clemson football after this word from Burger King. They're hoping he gets a shot at a run back with Donald Igwe Buike set to kick off. Clemson moving 58 yards in seven plays. Capped by that 14-yard touchdown run. And goodbye football. He got it into the stands this time. And through the upright. 8.51. Penalty flag in the air. Somebody took a shot. Somebody took a shot at a Clemson football player. At Ken Brown, a defensive end. And that'll put 15 more, maybe, or half the distance. Let's check it. It'd be from the 20, so they'll set it on the 10. This is a very proud program, Maryland. They have a fine tradition. Just recently under Bobby Ross, even a better tradition. They've done well. This is an awful beating to administer to a team that was ranked in the top 10 just a few weeks ago. And Bobby Ross, their rumors are he may be going to the NFL this year. Next year, Clemson giving him a little send-off. So the personal foul will put the ball back on the 10-yard line. Clemson, 42-7. has a chance, of course, moving up in that media pole, beating a, clean, a team as fine as Maryland has been this year. The Boomer hands it to his fullback, Badonik. Badonik gets a pretty good hit from Perry. Keith Williams hitting him first, got the initial hit. The shot of the refrigerator there, William Perry, 320 pounds, just a youngster. He's a junior. He's still growing. We expect him to be up over 400 by next year. Hit the weights. Ever seen him eat a hamburger? <laughs> That's an amazing sight. Second and 15. Remember, they had that 15-yard penalty. William Perry on the rush. And the boomer comes out of it with a fake uh, toss and goes out of bounds at the 26-yard line. They're going to mark it at the 25. Terrence Mack and Chucky Richardson in the pursuit. Boomer's life flashed before his eyes there when uh, Perry was closing on him. 
A lot to cheer about here today at Clemson. Next Everybody week will be in uh, Columbia, South Carolina for that interstate rivalry. Clemson versus South Carolina. Maryland meets North Carolina State. And Raleigh. Eight minutes, three seconds remaining here in the third quarter on a third and five from the 25. Esiason dropping straight back. Good pressure from the outside, and he decides to come out. A two-team hit. Crawford will get the first credit for the hit, number 49. Crawford, the backup to Jeff Wells, the backup to Edgar Pickett. So that'll bring Sadler out of the field, who in six punts has averaged 37.5 per kick. We used to have a saying when I played, they're coming out of the ground. And we meant that there seemed like there was 25 guys out there playing defense. Clemson's coming out of the ground right now. They're all over. Good pass defense, and they get Isaiah. That'll be roughing the kicker, and that'll give Maryland another chance. They did not get the football. Looked like Rod McSwain. And look at where the punt went. All the way back to the 23. Tyrone Davis and McSwain coming in on a scissor, and they... Uh, as you've said many times, Kevin, you've got to go out and try to get the block out in front of where you think the ball's going, not actually at the punter. Clemson's been close all day. It seems so simple, and uh, this guy, it looks like he kicks in slow motion almost. Well, look at McSwain went behind him. He went behind him and clipped him in the back, and then Davis came across and finished him off. It is roughing the kicker, and uh, I don't know, it's kind of surprising that so many people do it. Big break for Maryland, a first down at the 40-yard line. That's got to make the defense feel good, the Maryland defense. Gives them some time off the field. And Boomer a chance to connect with his receivers. The outside people are coming, and Boomer gets it away, and it's complete to uh, Holder, Eric Holder, the split in number 81. He's from Palmer Park, Maryland. Uh, Ronald Watson making the stop. Clemson did safety blitzing all day. They had Jeff Suttle coming on that. And I think Boomer recognized at the line of scrimmage an audible off and was able to pick up yardage. He's 10 for 24 through the air for 96 yards. Sullivan and Holder are the wide receivers on a first and 10 at the 48. Joiner. He moves for a gain of three yards in the play before Jeff Wells trips him up. And James Robinson made a nice play. He came from the backside in pursuit and just got a hand on Joyner. Good, good pursuit by Robinson. Joyner's made 11 carries, Kevin, uh, for 22 yards. Thompson defense not letting him break away. Yeah, they're not letting Maryland. The amazing thing here is Maryland is not able to do anything. They're not running, but they're not able to pass either effectively. Thompson seems to be just all over the field, as they were last week against the Tar Heels. Greg Hill comes to the near side, and it's Davis in the slot now on a second and six from the 44. The Boomer back, sets up, good spiral to Hill. Hill takes it at the 23. Out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Hill crossing a, across the field was picked up by Tyrone Davis, and Davis took him out of bounds. Hill just kind of saunters down the field, and what he's doing, this is a zone by Clemson. He's waiting for the middle man to clear, and you may get a look at it. See him right there at the bottom of your screen? He's waiting. It's almost a pick pattern. goes underneath the man running the flag pattern. Boomer hit him with a perfect pass. Probably the best play of the day for Maryland. Esiason starting to mount up a total now. 125 yards through the air. First and 10 from the 15. Gets the big rush from the inside man. Still plenty of time. Touchdown. Esiason takes it in himself on the run. He has the run that is from 15 for the Maryland touchdown. That's a competitor for you right there, Boomer Esiason. He's been running around like a madman trying to get away from that Clemson rush, and he did again that time for a touchdown. It was a good block in the backfield, too, for Boomer. Really knows how to freeze those people when he takes that pump fake, doesn't he? So that'll bring Jess Atkinson in. 76 point after touchdowns in a row, and that is the ACC record. Football players are a proud bunch. No matter what the score, you, you really you really want to play. They're going for the two-pointer two now, Kev. Yeah. 
leveled by Arrington from behind. Goal line defense, play action away. The corner man comes. Almost most defenses will play that way. As soon as they go play action, the quarterback has to expect pressure from the backside. Let's take a look at the touchdown here. Boomer does this on his own, all on his own. Number seven, he wants to go out to Van, uh, Badonic. That's covered. Now watch this block here. Oh, whoo. Great block by a Maryland lineman. Couldn't pick up his number. And now Boomer a fake to get the Clemson defender in the air. You never leave your feet. He'll remember that. That was McSwain. And Boomer dives for the post for the touchdown. So Boomer on the 15-yard touchdown run caps a 60-yard drive in five plays for Maryland. Just got inside the stick. Clemson 42, Maryland 13 with 6.05 remaining still in the third quarter. We've got Williams to the far side. And Terrence Rulak is on the near side. Waiting Atkinson's kick. We have two of the finest kickers in football, in college football right here, Bob Pauling and Jess Atkinson. We just haven't seen very much of Jess. <laughs> no, no, we haven't. But here he is right here, though. Okay, we're set to go. High and short. Williams. And he's got the picket line. Williams is a burner, but he has some... Uh, lots of uh, pursuit on him there, and it's the kicker, I believe. Atkinson. That was the same run back they had before. They had that wedge up the middle. Maryland converts on the wedge, and Williams just stepped outside with the great speed. And Clemson has been in the middle of the field or in Maryland territory most of the day. So Clemson now at the 40-yard line. A lot of players have impressed me for this Clemson team as they've matured throughout the season. But that Ray Williams is one of the most impressive. Braxton Williams, the fullback. He takes it to the 45-yard line. Must be said that Bobby DePaul, the starting right linebacker for Maryland, broke his leg last week against Auburn. He's out. Osset, who's had little experience, the backup for Wilson has moved over to the right side. And I believe that's hurt Maryland because Clemson has run well up the middle and they've dragged a lot of people. And when you lose a guy like DePaul, it upsets the continuity of your defense. Maryland is experiencing that. With that gain of six yards, Williams now has carried seven times for 46 yards in this ball game. Second and four from the 46. Braxton once again trying to battle for yardage. Doesn't quite get the first down. He needs to go over the 50. Gross and Koch making the stop. There's Braxton going back to the huddle. So it'll be third and a yard at the 49. Williams coming out to the near side. Put two tight ends down the ball game. On the short yardage situation. They decide on Braxton Williams. J.D. Dunn got the block on the outside, man. And Jim Joyce was called upon to make the tackle from the right tackle to fly a defensive spot. First out for Clemson with 444 remaining here with the third quarter. Clemson dominating Maryland 42 to 13. At this Ball point in the game. Out to 48. Excuse me, Kevin. At this point in the game, Art, a guy like Williams feels like he weighs about 440 pounds. He's been playing all day. Clemson has small backs, and when you tackle small backs, when they bring in a big back, it makes them feel even bigger. And I know Williams is just a load for these guys. Flowers blocking for Braxton Williams. Nice gain on the first and ten play. Furman making the tackle along with Gross. Flowers got the inside, man, as they came to the right side. Look at the rushing yardage. 203 yards for Clemson. Only 56 for the Terrapins. Second and five after the Williams five-yard gain at the 43. Kevin Mack back in at fullback, and he gets the carry. Slides off the tackler and makes his way to the 40-yard line. Two-yard gain is a yard shy of the first down. Eric Wilson, the tackler. 
It's our first real good look at Eric Wilson. Made a nice play, came inside out. And the loss of Bobby DePaul has got to hurt Eric Wilson, too. He's a junior, 240-pound linebacker, a sure pro prospect and a great football player. But without DePaul, I think he, too, is experiencing a little disorientation in there because he's used to playing with the other guy. Mack now is carried for 75 yards, third and three from the 41. Nowhere to go. And it's Koch making the tackle on Kevin Mack. Well, if you can if you can believe a team would run the clock out in the third quarter, I think that's what we're seeing here. Clemson very aware of the time. Maryland very explosive. Although I don't know how they'd have to be real explosive <laughs> to get back in this one, 42-13. But Dan Ford just kind of kind of rolling along here with his running game. Hatcher has averaged 42.3 a kick in his three previous punts. Hangs one. Beautiful hang time, and no one wants to get around that ball except Clemson Tigers to try to bat it back, and they can't. It's too far into the end zone. That was Hatcher's nine iron. He's been hitting three irons most of the game. That was his nine iron. He hit it nice and high and tried to drop it inside the 10. Did a nice job with the low snap as well. Two minutes and 33 seconds remaining third quarter. Maryland takes over now from the 20-yard line. And if the Terrapins can take the example set by their quarterback in the last drive and put everything together, they might make some interesting moves here. Hill and Davis, the wide receivers. Esiason calling the signals. The Boomer hands it off, and Joyner gets an opening at the line of scrimmage, taking it to another first down over the 30-yard line before Terrence Mack makes the ankle grab. It's Maryland running out of the pro set for the first time, or one of the only times today, and they get it to Joyner right off tackle. Behind Sean Benson, Harry Venezia, they did a good job over there. Boomer's stats as he brings his club to the line of scrimmage. Sean Sullivan is one of the wide outs. From the 30, two minutes remaining, third quarter. That's Davis in motion. Look out. It's that guy again, number 83, James Robinson. One of the changes defensively as you get into a situation like this is you ignore play action and that's a waste of time for Boomer to run the play action because Robinson's not even thinking that he handed the ball off that's the result the fourth sack of the year for James Robinson I would hate to be an opposing player next week and watch the films and know I have to try to block that guy coming over to Bill Rogers the tight end it was a second and 18 situation another change you get Scott made the tackle. Another, another, another change you get at this late in the game is the linebackers will take a deeper drop and keep the ball in front of them. They don't want the, the uh, receiver to get behind them, get the big yardage. So instead of dropping 7, 8, 10 yards, they'll drop maybe 12 or 15 yards. And that's what you saw there. They had Scott in front of them. Boomer holds every passing mark career-wise that Maryland has. Is now up to 134 yards in the air. Perry double team, and they put the ball right over the uh, center. Penalty flag goes down. It might have been a face mask on Bill Rogers. Well, the it was a pass interference. It appeared to be a pass interference. Rogers was hit just a tad, tad before he caught the ball. Billy Davis in the coverage. Yeah, it'll be a first down, Maryland. Art. They got the first down yardage on the pass play. Setting the ball at the 40. 34 seconds remaining before we enter the fourth quarter. The Boomer calling signals. First and ten. Hands to Joyner. Joyner a couple of yards shy from the first down as he's bounced out of bounds at the 48-yard line by Billy Davis. As you watch the Maryland backs, Joyner in particular, they, they just don't have the quickness that the Clemson backs have. The Clemson backs and the offense seems to explode these days. Over the second half of the year, they've improved so much. Maryland's backs are kind of drifting and picking their holes. Uh, 
Clemson just bang, they're through it and they're down up field. Up field. 13 seconds on the third quarter clock. Second and two at the 48. Boomer hands to his fullback this time. Badonic. And he's tackled by Roy Brown. Henry Walls helping out on the play. Tackle made by Roy Brown. Pause now for a word from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. We'll pause now for a word from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Clemson 42 to 13 over Maryland right now at first and 10 on the 46 yard line for the Terrapins. Siason, better known as Boomer, made straight back. Beautiful catch that time by Hill. It looks like he'll get it to Oh, nice tackle. Rod McSwain came up from behind on Greg Hill. Hill has 16 bet. touchdown receptions this year and uh, was looking for number 17, but McSwain wasn't about to give in. It was a timing pattern. They've been trying to get away with that all day, and either Boomer has mistimed it or it's been dropped. Now, Greg Hill is the fellow that dropped the ball on the sideline wide open for a touchdown earlier in the game. He's dropped about three or four, but that was an excellent catch. Boomer is actually a nickname. down from the eight yard line and Adonik with very little running room as Watson comes up to secure him after Eldridge Milton got a hand on him. We're talking about Boomer's name. His name is Norman Julius. He was uh, nicknamed Boomer because he was a little active before he was born, yeah. right? Yeah, Pre prenatal field goal kicking apparently and uh, <laughs> his, his correct name or at least the name he signs I guess is Norman Julius Esiason. For a touchdown, the crowd just a little noisy. And they charge Clemson with a timeout there. And that's the penalty. The crowd gets noisy, and uh, they did that in the first half. Now they're doing it again. Of course, with the score 42-13, it's, it's not all that important. But if it was a close game, it would be very important. 13-57 remaining in the contest, and Boomer over to the sideline to talk to Bobby Ross. Look at Dan Ford. Dan Ford. It's funny about coaches. They they're always unhappy about something. Four crowd noise delays in this <laughs> ball game. If you're really keeping precise statistics, like Mark Packer does. Well, the crowd has been a factor. You know, the Clemson team, the fans, the town. It's a unit. They win and they lose as a unit. Mostly win. They come and they play together, and it's just an amazing spectacle here. This is the final home game for Clemson, and, and they're out today. A lot of orange. The actual attendance really won't be determined for about a week when the tabulations are in, but the estimated attendance at today's game, 81,000, and that would be the largest ever to see Clemson play at home. Their final home game of the 83 season, second down, five yards for the touchdown. The Boomer back in the pocket. Hill can't get it. No penalty flag so far. There is a penalty. Yes, there is one. There is a penalty on this play. Uh, Boomer does a nice job on this play because he, he looks quickly and there's a receiver covered. Then he steps back and tries to find Hill. Let's take a look at Boomer. See him looking? You can see if you're reading his eyes, if you're playing defense, he wants to go here to the left side. And he says, whoop, nothing there. And then he sees Hill in the middle. Now watch Hill's going to get sandwiched. See, perfectly clear that... Get to uh, the ball, Henry Walls. Yeah, there. Henry Walls got him, and he got it for the backside, too. So it'll be first and goal for Maryland on the one. Let's we'll see if they try to go over all that beef for Clemson up front. Swing was kind of looking for 
for something like that to happen, obviously. Well, goal line defense is when you're playing the corner, you hit the first thing that shows, right? See, McSwain, you never let anything outside you on the goal line. Look at him. He's not even thinking about the fake. He wants Boomer. Offside penalty as well on the play, and so the ball will be put inside the one-yard line. Well, that had to be lining up in the neutral zone. And the reason that happens is in a goal line defense, you get down in a four-point stance with your head about an inch off the ground, and your face is almost on the ground. And a lot of times, when you get your face on the ground, you don't see all that well, and, you, <laughs> and, your, and your head goes over the ball. 67 yards stepped off against Clemson, 68 against Maryland. So it's first and inches. Penalty flag goes down as William Devane did a little jump job on the Boomer quarterback sneak. Well, there was a quiver throughout the Clemson defensive line. Boomer got in. Now it's a matter of who It'll the be a touchdown. Is. Offside Clemson will be a Maryland touchdown right now. So both touchdowns here in the second half have been scored on the ground by the rifle arm Boomer. But set up by the uh, pass interception, uh, pass uh, interference to Hill, and also the great catch by Hill on the, on the long reception. There's 13 minutes, 14 seconds still remaining here in the fourth quarter. Despite the fact that Clemson has a 42 to 19 lead and Atkinson is in to try the extra point. Boomer, the holder, the kick is up, the kick is true. So Maryland has put 20 points on the board, but it's Clemson 42 to 20 here in the fourth quarter. We'll be back in a moment. Five yard penalty. Puts the ball at the 45 for the kickoff. Atkinson puts the chip shot over the front line. And it's well covered that time. That's a great outside kick, by the way. Atkinson Boyer. with a little looper. Boyer covered it? Yes. Yeah, that's a good onside. That was an onside kick, folks, and the thing, thing went about 20 yards, and Maryland it was not all that far from recovering it. Atkins did a good job there, an excellent kicker for Maryland. Maryland took the ball 80 yards in 12 plays for their last score, and, and now you, Clemson takes over. You know, the drawback of an onside kick is giving a team field position. Look where Clemson takes over. They take over on their own 20, and that was a legitimate onside kick at them with the five-yard penalty helping the situation out. Epley, penalty flag goes as he passes to Flowers. Flowers, a gain of three yards on the play, if that. And we'll check out the yellow hankies. Well, the flag brings to mind how good the pass blocking has been for Clemson. We have numerous shots today of Epley just standing there with plenty of time. And uh, they just cut Maryland down on the defensive line. Personal foul on the Terrapins. That's at least the third that I can recall. And they've been charged with 83 yards and penalties and only six calls. So each one has been a pretty big one. 13-03 remaining fourth quarter. Clemson 42 to 20. The outcome in this game, the final score is important. We're talking rankings here in bowl bits. Maryland can't let down. They need to get close in this game. Williams, Alley, and Boyer, three wide receivers in the ball game right now. On a first and ten from the 35. And off goes up the middle to Kevin Mack. Kevin Mack. Eric Wilson making the tackle. Wilson, a junior out of Charlottesville, Virginia. We talked a great deal about James Farr and uh, Dale Swing and some of the other the other Litton. The offensive line of Clemson's done a remarkable job all year, and today, especially today and last week against North Carolina, they've just been great. Mack now has carried for 75 yards. There you see his stats in 22 rushes. Second and eight from the 37. Mack once again makes it over the 40-yard line. All of a sudden, Clemson goes conservative up the middle. Well, they started this in the middle of the third quarter, and... Uh, with a 22-point lead, they have reason to be conservative. Joyce and Wilson combining for the stop on Mack. Normally takes more than one guy to bring it down. Third down and five from the 41. 
Williams to the far side, and it's Boyer to the near side as Epley calls the signals. Over the middle, he goes to Dunn, complete at the 46-yard line is forward progress. Al Cullington making the stop. Accuracy, the key on this play from Epley. I'm surprised to see him go downfield. I thought this would have been a draw play. Epley straight back again, looking for Dunn. Dunn holds his hand up, and look at that, right between the numbers. And it almost had to be between the numbers. Well, you take that blocking, and it would have been a good draw play. <laughs> yeah. To drive a semi right up the middle, and of course, that's great for eyesight for that passer to pass in that lane. First and 10 from the 47. Scrambling up the middle for almost another first down was Kevin Mack. Baker and Fossett. Hard to believe that Kevin Mack has carried the ball in this game 23 times. Seems, seems as though he's carried it about 10 times, but 22 times now he's closing in on 90 yards for 23 carries. Mack's best game, 150 yards against Duke, now goes to 85 yards in 24 carries. Second and three. Flowers of the tailback spot on a second and two. But it goes to the big guy. Matt, oh, what a move at the 37-yard uh, line, and he's finally shoestring tackled at the 24. Byron Baker finally making the tackle. This is what makes Kevin Mack, some say, the best ACC back. Look at him go as he gets a good block, but he's so versatile he can run in the open field, he can catch passes, and he's an excellent blocker. The difference between he and Braxton Williams is that play right there. I don't believe Braxton could run that play as well as Kevin Mack. Up to 108 yards now as he comes to the sideline. First and 10 at the 24 for the Tigers. Braxton Williams up the middle. Bangs his head into a stone wall. Braxton Williams. This is what Clemson does to you so well when they get the lead. They just pound it out. They pounded it out against Duke. They pounded it out against Wake Forest. They did the same to North Carolina and now against a very fine Maryland defense. That offensive unit is just as strong as it can be and getting stronger every week. Mesner and Furman picking off Williams after a four-yard gain, so it's second and six at the 20-yard line. Epley on the option, a late pitch, and... Uh, the turnover, the first turnover of the ball game, or did they say it was out of bounds? I think they're going to rule that the ball is out of bounds and no one really had possession. Let's check it again. This ball apparently hits the referee. Let's watch Epley as he goes to the corner. He's undecided about what he wants to do. He thinks he wants to turn up field, but it's a late pitch, a good pitch. It's not handled. And then at the bottom of your screen, I think you'll see it hit the referee. Right there, hits the inside leg, would have gone out of bounds, so Clemson will retain the ball. Third and four from the 18-yard line. Braxton Williams did not get the first down. He has to go to the 14-yard line before he can. You know, the versatility of uh, the backs for Clemson this year, Kevin, we've talked about it before, but when you look down at the top rushers of the various ball games, you've got Flagler, you've got Mack, the leading rusher for four games. Flowers for one game, Stacy Driver the last three games, and now it looks like Mack might do it again. Only one senior there. Braxton Williams, the only senior. Bob Pauling, who's six for six, field goal wise. Puts it up, and it's good. So Pauling's field goal puts more points on the board for Clemson. Clemson 45, Maryland 20. We'll pause now for a word from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Clemson 45, Maryland 20. Pauling's 15th field goal of the year in 17 tries. The bullet by Igwe Buike picked up at the 20-yard line. That's a pretty good running as it moves up to the 46-yard line by Brokovic. Brokovic, he's a fullback by trade. Well, that's a scary position to be in. The up back on the kickoff never handles the ball. And especially against Igwe Buike, you'd never expect it. <laughs> you catch it, and you're supposed to lateral it back to somebody, but, oh, Bergovich says, well, I'm going to take it myself. And he did, up to the 46-yard line. Pollings field goal for 35 yards. And now Maryland takes over at the 46, first and 10, 8.39 remaining. 
trailing by 25 points. The Boomer is back. Seemed like it took a long time for that ball to get to the receiver, but it got to uh, Russell Davis for more than first down yardage at the 32-yard line. This guy can bring you back pretty quick if everything connects. He's got a long way to go here. Let's take a look at this. Clemson giving the receivers a lot of room here as Davis. This pass a little bit behind Davis, too, but Clemson not really on top of him, and he gets the completion. Zayasen. 194 yards in this ball game, but that sometimes is deceiving. The rush is on, and Zyerson takes it out of bounds. The flag down there, Art, it's going to be holding on. I can see the holding up here. I'd be amazed if it's not holding. Ray Brown with great pressure on him. There you see Jeff Wells, who also was in the chase. I wonder if they count that one balloon in the... Uh, 315,000, they said off at the beginning of the game. I think that one should count at least 25 balloons. <laughs> <laughs> it is your holding call, Kevin, and with 8.09 remaining in the ball game, ball placement back to the 45-yard line. It'll still be first down. A season that started with so much promise for Bobby Ross, and now he's staring at, at this beating at the hands of Clemson. It'll be his third loss of the year. First and 23. He dropped the ball. He dropped the ball. Jeff Wells, no, Devane. Wells, I think, tipped the ball, and Devane had it squirmed through his hands. The thing about this play is not so much the pressure. It's the awareness of all these guys. These guys are so well coached. It's incredible. Look at Wells. He gets his hand up, and the rest of them are ready, which is even more amazing. Devane, oh, I don't know, William. You had a chance there to sprint for a touchdown. They, they actually look for those things, and we've seen that all year with Clemson. They, they just know the game. Devane more accustomed to sacks, tackles for losses, uh, fumble recoveries, causes fumbles and his chance there he'll get some ribbon on that second and 23 boomer fading back has his man wide in the open and a good hit at the 25 davis took the hit from reggie pleasant There's davis there we're now seeing a little bit of the accuracy that auburn spoke of with Isaiah, and he he threw that ball right on the money is this the, did he take his tiger suit off, or is this a new guy? No, that's a challenger. The tiger, I think, is at his day. He's uh, right there behind watching. Those are not good push-ups. Those are he's cheating there on those push-ups. <laughs> Forty-five to twenty. That's a lot of push-ups. Seven fifty-five remaining fourth period. Hill and Davis, the wide receivers. That's Davis in motion. The boomer drills it in and. Did he hold on to that ball? Russell Davis did, though, inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. Billy Davis with another pop. Well, Boomer's finally found somebody that's going to catch the ball in a crowd here, and Davis is getting tattooed on every play. But Boomer rolls away from his arm to the right, and again, the good accuracy is he throws it just under the chin of Davis. And another Davis. Billy Davis puts him down. Jeff Suttle comes in at the strong safety. Davis, one of his fine days of his career, four receptions for 64 yards. It'll be first and 10 at the 14 for Maryland. I've been in a lot of these games where you lose, you know, you lose big, and you always stay in the huddle in the fourth quarter, and you say to each other, we could have won this game. Gee, we, look at how we moved the ball. We could have won this game. Unfortunately, you have to play 60 minutes to win a game. Rock rolls with 720 on it. More pressure. He did well to get the ball away. Great Bill coverage. Rogers. It was intended for Rogers to tight end coming across the field. The holes that were there against the Clemson defense in second, third, fourth game of the year, they're not there anymore. Clemson just absolutely covering any everybody on the field. They had the backs in the backfield covered. They had everybody in the secondary covered, and his eyes and just threw it away. We have one more game on the season, of course, against South Carolina versus Clemson. But what amazes me, too, Kevin, is so many young players on this Clemson team. Those stats you just saw, 226 for Maryland, that's very misleading. The Boomer gets it to one of his fine receivers out of the backfield to Donick. And the loose football, the scramble, let's see how the young pile. 
Lindstrom comes the Clemson Tigers with the football. We talked about the hitting. Watch number 40, Badonic. This is a tough cookie, Badonic, and a good receiver. He'll take the pass from Isaiasen and try and turn up field. But he gets hit by Suttle. The ball comes loose. Isaiasen has a shot at it. He overruns it. And then Walls apparently has it caught under his legs or somewhere. We'll be back with more Clemson football after this word from Burger King. Back first and ten at the 12-yard line. Anthony Peretti from Jacksonville, Florida. Charleston and Butler, the wide receivers. They'll keep it on the ground, however, as it goes to Kevin Mack. Mack, the fullback. Still in there. I'm surprised he's still in there. He's got to be tired. Mack's a senior, Art. Seniors don't get tired in their last game. <laughs> at home. Last home game for the seniors. McHale and Furman combining for the stop on Mack after a gain of three yards on the play. So it'll be a second and seven situation for the Tigers at the 15. Back at the 16-yard line. Peretti with five completions and 23 attempts, one interception. Pitches back to Mack. Oh, what a hole. And Mack building up on his yardage. Amazing thing about Kevin Mack, I think, is that he, he wasn't even a starter until this year. Clemson, with all the great backs they've had, Mack was a reserve, took over as a starter this year. In fact, he won the job in fall camp, and now he turns in a great year that he's had. Koch and Fawcett making the stop. Mack closing in on his greatest day. 26 carries, 121 yards on the ground. First and 10 at the 28 for the Tigers. 54 remaining in the game. Mack right up the middle once again, holding his way for three or four more before Terry Burke finally pulls him down. Kevin Mack had 150 yards versus Duke in just 18 carries. You remember the first play of that game or second play? He went down the sideline for about 60 yards. Second and six now from the 33, Braxton Williams at fullback. Braxton to the 35. Three yards short of the uh, first down. Let's check out some total offensive statistics as Fossett makes the uh, tackle for Maryland. An awesome 457 yards total offense for the Clemson Tigers. And they've been they've been running their slowdown offense for about the last 10 minutes in this game, trying to run the clock out. Third and four now for Clemson. Williams. He gets to midfield. I should say Kevin Mack. Let's check it out. He had a great hole to go through there, Kevin. Let's take a look at some blocking on the left side. That's angle number 59. One of them, look at the caving into Maryland defense, cutting up into the seam. And then a good hit by Covington coming across. Covington's been in on a few. Safeties shouldn't make all that many tackles. Braxton Williams comes back for Kevin Mack in the backfield as he has his 144th yard. From the 50, first and 10. Braxton Williams, they're just pulling up the middle to take that clock down. Four minutes, four minutes, 12 seconds remaining to be played in the ball game. Some of the fans yelling ACC, ACC, but I think a lot of them are leaving Memorial Stadium right now with a very pleased feeling inside, a very quiet respect for their ball club. I think respect is the key. This is a team that had no chance at a bowl. They're going to go eight, one, and one, apparently uh, against Maryland here. If they beat Maryland, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Williams has 70 yards in 15 carries. He's still in there at fullback. Stacy Driver at tailback has not seen much action here in the second half as Peretti holds on on the option play. It was a second and five. You know, there are very few programs who withstand the type of pressure that this program has been under for the last school, I guess about eight or nine months on probation. Of course, they'll be on probation next year. They came into the year, a lot of question marks, a lot of young people. Dan Ford and the coaching staff got these guys together, and now they go undefeated in the ACC. And that's, that's something, that's a pretty big accomplishment. The play under the far side in the slot. On 
a third and two at the 42. Ready, goes to the fullback, Kevin Mack, and he's got a new career high. Kevin Mack to the five, touchdown. He's getting mobbed over there. Kevin Mack in 30 carries has 186 yards in this ball game. What a deserving runner. Those are John Reagan's numbers. was Kevin Mack. And this is just raw power and desire. Look at the way he slipped right through the arms of Al Covington, number 18. Look how he goes in with an arm against Krause. Kevin Mack, great day and a great season for what I think will be an excellent offensive weapon for any NFL team. A sign on the far side, Clemson 19, ACC nothing. Good blocking here on the seam here, but look at Mack in the, in the secondary. I mean, most backs go down there. Most backs go down there. And now he's, after all the running he's done, he still has the speed and the energy to drag Krause into the end zone. Kevin Mack. Pauling after the extra point, making it 52 to 20, will also kick off now. Mack, a 42-yard run, capping an 88-yard drive in 10 plays. Neal picking it up off the ground on the liner, and he stopped at the 28-yard line. So that's where Maryland will take over with two minutes and 48 seconds remaining to be played in this ball game. And the new quarterback for Maryland coming into the ball game is number 14, Frank Wright. Frank has done well in his appearances, subbing for the Boomer. Boomer's been injured in one game. 15 out of 28. That's better than 53% of his passes for 169 yards. Wright goes back, dishes it off. And Clemson giving Blount, Alvin Blount, lots of running room and just making sure he doesn't get away. Vandal Errington making the stop as the ball placement is just shy of the 45-yard line. Blount and Tommy Neal, the new backfield for Maryland. Wright. And that's over to Neal. Neal going out of bounds right at the first down stick. Billy Davis making sure he stays out over there with 2.28 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Clemson 52 to 20 over Maryland. We really expected to see more of Tommy Neal, number 48, in the ball game at the fullback spot. But Donick coming into the ball game not knowing whether he could start or not. Tried things out in the pregame warm-ups, and he played uh, most of the time there at fullback. But now Tommy Neal with the awesome score that Clemson has put up, getting a chance to play more. Pass over the middle, hit hard at the 36-yard uh, line was Russell Davis. Good pass by Reich. Reich is the quarterback that played against Pittsburgh when Maryland upset Pittsburgh 13-10 to 10 early. He's a fine athlete. Junior, 6'4", 205 pounds from Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Billy Davis is down on the field being attended to right now. Reich's dad was a captain at Penn State in the 50s. Captain the Penn State team. He's from Altoona, Pennsylvania, I believe. In this. And he can play. You'll see a lot of him next year for Maryland. I think we've got to talk a little bit about Maryland. Their season's not over. They've got to go to NC State to win the official ACC title. They still will remain after today undefeated officially in the ACC. Clemson's game don't count. If they beat State they win the ACC title, but this score, 52 to 20, could be devastating as far as their bowl bids are concerned. They were looking really for a secondary bowl, one of the, I guess one of the middle bowls. 
losing this badly is going to create some problems for Clemson. That they're going to move up in the rankings, and then after the bowl games, which they won't be a part of, with teams losing in bowl games, Clemson easily could be ranked in the top ten this year. The Citrus Bowl here in Force, taking a good look at Maryland. There have been rumors floating around that Johnny Majors wants to take his Tennessee team to the Citrus Bowl. That might be an interesting matchup. Two minutes, 19 seconds remaining on the clock here in the fourth quarter. Clemson 52 to 20 over Maryland. Now most of their thoughts shifting towards South Carolina next week. There's the young man who's guided that offense. Number 14, Mike Epley. There was some talk about Epley and Boomer Esiason head-to-head -head for player of the year in the ACC. If that was the case, then that's the man right there, number 14, Mike Epley. 12-1-1, one one, career record as a starting quarterback at Clemson. And there's a very unhappy Boomer. Hey, Esiason, uh, I live in the Washington area. Esiason brought so much to the uh, to the uh, Maryland program. He's such an outspoken kid and a good kid and uh, and so exciting that he's helped the Maryland program in so many ways. First and 10 at the 36 for the Terrapins. Setting up the screen pass and booting it off his leg was Alvin Blanc. He was an ACC rookie of the week not long ago against Duke as the penalty flag goes in the air. Rushing for 57 yards on seven carries, but this is a much different situation. Well, guys, I don't know if you're going to get to number one, but you're going to get pretty high before this season's over, that's for sure. You're going to be way up in the ranking. Number one in the hearts of the Clemson fans, there's no question about that, the way yeah. they've... The record certainly doesn't matter about that. I don't. I think this team could be 0-11, and they'd be here 80,000 strong, just screaming their brains out. This is the largest crowd to ever see a Clemson home game. Second down and 10 from the 36, the penalty declines. Two minutes, eight seconds remaining. Right. Puts it long and deep, deflected, and almost caught. Chris Knight putting his hand in the air almost got the deflection. Well, we may get a look at the future here for Maryland, and it doesn't look bad. Frank Reich drops straight back. He's got a man deep on a post pattern, and this is a great pass. Well thrown over the coverage. Just a little finger there by McSwain, and that's all it took. But that, that ball's an inch further at the touchdown. Kenny Danforth also getting some playing time on the coverage. Third and 10 from the 36. Lobbing it and putting it up into the sun. Sean Sullivan really didn't have a chance for that. The pass looked like it might have been out of bounds, but looking up in the sun again, because he had a good break on the uh, back Arrington. This is Art Ekman with Kevin Kiley from Memorial Stadium in Clemson. We're in the final period of action, 151 remaining in the fourth quarter with the score, Clemson 52, Maryland 20. Maryland with a fourth and 10 at the 36. Substitutes galore. Taking a look at some of the young talent. And we do have Russell Davis, an experienced senior at split end to the far side. Frank Reich standing back in the pocket to pass. And he gets it to Davis. Davis hog tied at the 19-yard line. It'll be another first down for Maryland. Trying to put some points on the board. Rod McSwain making the tackle. Davis has had himself a good day despite the score. Ball placement at the 16 for the first down play with 139. Clock moving. Reich swings it out. That's Tommy Neal. Tommy Neal takes it down to the seven yard line and making the tackle in is Ken Brown. Neal, Blount, and Reich have, uh, have given a little spark to the Maryland offense. Tough to come in in a situation like this. Reich's doing a real good job. Second down. Two yards to go for a first down. Eight for a touchdown. That's to Hill. He'll bounce out of bounds by Rod McSwain. McSwain's been a heavy hitter in this ball game. Been getting some good shots. There have been some crunching. There's no question about that. This entire game was played with the, the heavy leather being laid out on both sides. And Clemson just, I think, just played a better game. Over the year, they've improved so much, and they've been 
so precise offensively. Their defense the last two or three weeks has come on and, and been intense and done the job, and that's been the difference. McSwain's last home game as a senior. First and five. And it'll be the touchdown to Chris Knight as he could have walked in. So Reich gets his first touchdown pass. Terrific job by Reich. Terrific job. All the way down the field. 105 remaining. Atkinson in to try for the extra point. Esiason comes back into the ball game to hold for him. The snapper is Wilson, number 55. The kick is up and the kick is good. Atkinson almost was automatic. In fact, uh, they're about the same as Pauling. Impressed with the poise of Reich here. Watch what he does. He'll look away from the receiver right away. Watch his head. See him looking the other way and then he quick turns and rifles the ball here to Knight. Knight runs a good pattern outside the coverage and he steps into the end zone. Good, good offense from Reich the whole way down the field and his receivers did a nice job too. A powerful, well-controlled pass for backing up like he did. Yeah, look at this. See how he looked him off and then he, he throws a little bit of a pick there by Sean Sullivan on Arrington. That five-yard touchdown pass capping a 72-yard drive in 11 plays. Well, we get word now, excuse me, Art, we get word that North Carolina has lost. That means Maryland wins the ACC title outright, even though they lose here at Clemson. They are now the ACC champions, although I, I don't know that they're feeling awfully, awfully good about that right now. And they're only one loss, of course. Fifty-two to twenty-seven, Clemson over Maryland. Night now, and Igwe Buike. No, that's Terrence Rolak, number fifteen, sneaking up now. As they, of course, anticipate the onside kick. Jess Atkinson had a pretty one good one going for him earlier on a chip shot, and this one he puts down on the ground. It's covered immediately. We'll see when they unpile to see who jumped on that football. Looked like Stacy Driver, number 21, comes up with it. Bobby Ross, he's heard the score of the North Carolina-Virginia game, 17-14 Virginia, but no joy for Bobby Ross taking the ACC title this year. The Tigers at the 49 with one minute, two seconds remaining. Driver and Braxton Williams out of the I formation. Peretti is the quarterback, and it goes to the fullback. Maryland calling a quick timeout with 57 seconds left on the clock as Tom Parker, the right guard, defensively makes the stop on Braxton Williams. Williams a gain of a two on the, on the carry. 